What's up, everyone, and welcome to the Anime Izakaya Podcast, week 12. Uh, sorry, this is the f- week two of the winter 2020 season. Uh, I'm your host, David, and joining me today, we have Stren. Hi, guys. Next up, we have Brian. Hello! Next up, we have Ku. Well, hello, friends. All right. And so, yeah, we're, this, we're going to start um, talking about basically the new shows that aired for the new anime season. Um, if you want to hear what we talk about for the fall season, we have uh, the backlog already uh, available on both like our YouTube channel and also um, on any of the uh, the podcast apps. And we're talking about we're gonna talk about a lot of shows today. We're gonna um, try to keep it maybe light, a little light on the spoilers, just in case like, people want to just check out the first couple episodes. But then going from there on after, we're gonna uh, start talking more about like just what happened, what actually happened in the episodes, and there'll be more spoilers. So we'll just keep it light for this week and going forward, just expect um, spoilers for the episode. We do have timestamps available in the YouTube description and also in, in, and for the YouTube video and also in the show notes for the audio version. So if there's a show that you just want to listen to or you're worried about spoilers, just just look at the timestamps and just jump through that. Timestamps will usually be done like either the day or the day after yeah uh, for the video depending on how, how busy we are yeah but we'll yeah we'll definitely have time stamps so you can jump to whatever shows we're gonna talk about and i'll oh, also mention too um we're uh next or this week whatever um we're gonna watch weathering with you and we'll um we'll talk about that on next week's show and um also i should mention too the hero academia uh movie so the second hero academia movie got announced for north america or at least in the u.s on february 26 and we're definitely gonna watch that as well so we'll talk about that. We'll mention that on the podcast too when we all go watch it. Tickets go on sale, I think, at the end of the month. End of the month, yeah. yeah. So that's just the general housekeeping intro. And then we're going to jump right into My Hero Academia. Uh, so this episode, this is basically like a part, I would say like part three of like the huge battle going on between Chisaki and like everyone else. So this episode, like, is um, we, we find out that basically uh, Toga baited like uh, the girls in the, the basically outside to bring over um, one of the bullets into the under- underground area where like, Chisaki and Deku was fighting. And then we get we finally get to reveal what uh, Aerie's uh, quirk was. She has the power to rewind. So basically, um, they didn't really, I guess they didn't really explain much about it, but like in this episode, she was rewinding, um, like, I guess like, she was rewinding Deku's body to before he was destroying it with his 100%. And just overall, this was a very like very emotional episode of like when they had they had like the song playing when uh, Deku was jumping up to grab Eri, and just like the whole fight was just like basically trying to finish off like Deku versus Achisaki. So I want to hear you guys, your guys' thoughts. Like, just, I, how in fact was, was this episode for you guys? I didn't really think it was that emotional. I thought it was a really weird place, <laughs> really weird place for the song to play um because i didn't feel like really anybody's life was in danger i don't know if it was just because deku was a part of it but i don't know i feel like the song could have worked out better with with the uh, the million uh battle just because like uh you know he wasn't the main character you're not really quite sure what's gonna happen with them so that was my mm-hmm. thoughts on this part of the song the song was fine I mean, but it's just like i just thought it was it just felt like a weird kind of place to put it if you're not the MC, I don't think you deserve a song to be playing. Jeez. While you do oh epic God. Dude, well, I even mean... after Lumillion? Come on. Again, he just showed up uh, this season. So don't matter, man. Uh, I'm not going to put too much hope <laughs> or hype on the guy. I just want uh, to... But... Oh, go ahead, Goo. Yeah, no, I think the song would have been better off if they played it during the moments after he realized what Eri's abilities were. And he was going 100% like... Yeah. Uh, like during that yeah. battle with Chisaki. I think that would have made more sense, right? Yeah. Because he literally went from like 0 to 100 like that. Yeah, and he was just beasting it like Aries feeling, like she's worth something, like she's useful, she's not a curse. Uh, I think that would have been the more uh, emotional moment to play the music. Wait, yeah, the, the... you talking about like that slow song I was playing? Yes, oh, right. I don't know. I feel like it, they <laughs> they they knew what they were doing about it. Because if you play that song, are you trying to say that they should have played the song like while Deku was? fighting chisaki well, i would I imagine so i mean why not right because uh, i mean of, like for it, was, sl- it wasn't fast pace it was kind of slow pace because they're constantly talking about uh like each character uh specifically like chisaki was doing his backstory while he was getting beat up uh like night eye was trying to say like oh i didn't see this happening before uh you know like you guys can't win i saw the future already um and then 
uh Deku was trying to piece everything together. Oh, okay, so this is what you do. And then he's like, Okay, like Eri, thank you for your quirk. Your quirk is such a blessing, blah blah blah. I I don't know. I kind of disagree with that because I, I feel like they, they knew what they were doing with like the song placement just because like it was it was a moment for Aerie to to like have like a sort of mini spotlight. It's like because the song I I don't know what the hell the song was about, but from what it sounded <laughs> like, it, it sounded like it was her her point to shine where she could openly break free from Chisaki herself. So that song, for me, it fit perfectly because everything was going super slow. The song matched the tempo of the scene. And then after that, after the song ended, that's when it started picking up back again and, and continuing with the fight. So I personally, I thought the song was fine. Yeah, I, I, was I, I agree with Brian because I think the song is more focused on Aerie. Like, I don't think it's really for Deku because, because like, also, it was, I think it was last episode. Oh, okay. Last okay. episode was when um Aerie, she was running away with, like, she was running away with Toga, but then she came back. And so this time, I think this time it was like her saying like I'm I'm leaving for good. Yeah, I um for the song, I think um the the song that they played for Deku's battle, I still think it was weird because it, it sounded like uh, almost like it just it, it felt like like Deku was becoming evil or something with how the song was being played really? out. Really, I I didn't the, feel that way. The, the, the song just sounded like uh like eerie almost like uh like I don't know if he was just fake because I thought like um I didn't know like uh I got like thoughts of like maybe like Deku's just gonna just. Just kill this guy. Um, uh, okay, I don't, I don't know. Really, dude, I don't know because I, I watched like I played back it a couple times today, and like just this, this like the, the song that they chose, it just sounds. I dude, I don't know what what I don't know what song or what part you all are talking about, but like they, they, even they're... during you while while Deku is going a hundred percent with Ari on his back, the 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 song the 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 music is very upbeat. It's going. It's trying to get you hyped up. I felt it, but. I don't know what like the only eerie part I remember is when they're looking back at Chisaki's past. That's literally it. If you um if you go let's let's say like if we go if we get like once we finish this you should go back and just like just hear, hear like the um the part where like when like all those fists start flying and everything and just the song that's playing in the background. Um, when what starts flying? <clears throat> when Deku just starts punching just you know the hell out of uh what's uh out of um Chisaki. Um, I was just want to mention. I'm gonna mention real quick that um. Uh, the just the brightness, like uh, the censorship, like was really annoying in this fight because it kept going nah. on, on and off, and like it was really distracting for me. I don't know. For me, I'm so <clears throat> used to it at this point in like any anime, I just expected that. But like when some crazy shit. I happen, I only so. I only noticed it during Hero Academia. Like I've never noticed it in any other show, but besides this one, so like it's just so much more noticeable for me. Mm, oh, I, um, I didn't notice anything. Maybe I'm just not paying enough attention but. i mean i watch a bunch of bright anime i guess <laughs> i'm just i guess i'm used to it so that's just... um oh and then like what you guys think of um chisaki like just turning into a heat giant even like more giant monster like bro chisaki's a giant bitch bro honestly <laughs> i don't know man this guy he basically <laughs> he was he was trying to make his his daddy proud but his daddy didn't approve of him oh yeah that's so got he... fucked up he just like made him sick with his quirk you pretty much gave him a brain tumor. Is what I know. Yeah, pretty much. Dude, Chisaki's a horrible character. I don't know what you guys saw him. <laughs> this was like, no, you don't see it. My vision is what's going to change the world. Don't you guys see that? Uh, and then blah, like, blah, that part, and... that part really ruined his character. Like, before, before that, like, it seemed like he had, like, ambitions and he was gonna, I thought he was gonna be, like, a good leader. And I thought he was gonna have, have like, a good, like, like, a huge army that actually, that, like, that makes the heroes. Like struggle a lot against his plans, but this whole his know. whole thing about how he uh he basically wants to give like give the bullets to the the villains and then give the the like the cure to the heroes and then control it like it's just, yeah, it was just dumb. It's he just... honestly he was just trying to just control a certain marketplace for just for just money that's such a terrible just that's <laughs> such a terrible like character design dude like exactly. yeah. why would you i that's why i like stain so much man because he was such a badass character like yeah. just to have all because his views are actually it's like dude like half of the hero organization are a bunch of pussies yeah, like they just want money clean them out <laughs> that's what he was doing this dude is like yeah i just want the money dude yeah. it's like bro really yeah it's just it's just it's just paying them yeah someone agree so like it's, and it's just yeah. it was, whereas like yes yeah, where stainless <laughs> stainless yeah. basically calling like the hero industry like sellouts 
So yeah, yeah. It, was, it was great because yeah. this dude was standing his own. He was making people do their shit, and this while this dude Chisaki's over here, just like yeah, I just want to control a certain marketplace for a drug. And then just oh, no, I mean, he basically like, he wanted to revive the yakuza, and I was like, that was one way he was gonna do it, but like, it's, it's so bad. Like, Wait, it just, guys, it just, you, it just felt really shallow. Yeah. Do you guys, do you guys think that this is gonna like, uh, kind of like hurt the uh, League of Villains reputation? League of Villains? League of Villains? No. Uh, no, no, they're they're no, like no. because I mean they they, 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 were, they basically got like like because t- Lemillion he would have <laughs> been like a. Um, really, he would have been like a pain for them to deal with, and now they basically got him taken care of for free. And like, I guess, but okay, not yeah. anymore. I guarantee you, next episode, I'm gonna walk up to all my Anne Lamil and be like, "Hey, we can reverse your cripple if you really want to." And then All Might's gonna be like, "Nah, I'm okay." And then Lamil is like, "Nah, I'm okay." That's how I see this next episode. <laughs> <laughs> like, wow. no lie. Uh, okay, so that's, that's have, like I don't know. That's, does he that. have the serum, or was that the was that a future plan? What do you the, mean? the serum? No, I'm talking like just, no, just talking just just walk yeah. up to them and oh, use his unicorn powers. Oh, okay, yeah, gotcha, gotcha. yeah. <clears throat> Again, um, ultimate cop out ability right there. I I can yeah. kind of see it coming from Malo. God, like that. Just I'm okay. I'm okay I mean, like I enjoyed I the fight, though. I enjoyed the fight that happened, but like it was when they reveal it was rewind. I was like, God damn it, no, not. A rewind ability. I hate that so much. But I thought all you guys love time travel. No, what happened? What? No, this is. Oh yeah, yeah. Not, I love time travel. Time travel, of course. Like... Dude, that is basically time travel. That's... Rewind, like rewinding time before something happens. That is time travel. Not time. That's not time Backwards. travel for everyone. That's for one person. That's that's like that's not. It's like whoever she influences or you know, touches or no. uses the ability on. Well, you know how Dragon Ball has. It's basically, it's basically like... healing. Like it's like OP healing. That's not time travel. Well, well, you know how Dragon Ball has some Dragon Balls, so they can make a wish to revive the dead people. Well, Hero Academy has Eri, so you know now they have that mechanic where they can uh, help out the heroes recover. Yeah, yeah. I hope like they don't. Like, I hope they use the excuse saying that like she can't control it yet, so that's why they don't want to use it. Because otherwise, think... it'll be like a huge cop out for a lot of people. I, I think that's how it's going to be because as of right now, uh, Ari is so full emotional that she's just releasing all of her powers. It's like, right? I I really don't want her. And once everything's calmed down, I don't want her to use her powers. I, I... So, like, just it just ruins like just all the tension. Like, if you can just if you like the Dragon Ball moment where like I'll just use use the Dragon Balls basically. I mean, just use Ari's powers. It, it makes sense that somebody would have this ability though. Like, if somebody can remove quirks or like you know get rid of them, that would only make sense that somebody can like you know repair or, or bring back. I mean, it, yeah, but like I didn't yeah, want it in the story right now though, because you know how like for for one for all, there's an all for one. So yeah. each quirk seems to have like an opposite of it. So of course, I feel this was going to come into play eventually, but uh, kind of like how David said, I was kind of hoping they wouldn't have found it in the series and just leave it out. Yeah. Well, I mean, but th- that would kind of destroy, like, I guess, part of the story where where uh, Shisaki's dad was, or the person that took him in, was saying about how, like, oh, you guys' quirks are similar, and then she, he's just like, you know, figure it well, out. You didn't have like, to, you didn't have to mention it. You could have just not written it at all. Like, th- that, th- the story would have been even worse. <laughs> how? Like, then, like, or it's because that that whole thing would have been because, like, how, like, how would the, uh, like, what would be the point of taking an area then? I don't know. Figure something I, else out. Just not rewind. Uh, not rewind. I would have so, been, uh, I I mean, been okay. If it was something similar to Eraser, but a lot stronger. But this isn't even on Eraser's level. It's like a whole different level to rewind something completely. Yeah. Well, because Eraser well, just like nullifies. I right. Think. Yeah. Like, because her, her thing is just she can, at a certain point, she can legit make you non existent. Uh, that, that in itself is <laughs> broken. Yeah. But I'm, I'm pretty sure for something of this scale, there has to be some sort of like cooldown or like requirement that needs to be met in order for it to actually activate. Like maybe it's like a, I don't know, like a thirty day cooldown or some shit. Well, like, they made it, it sound it like has to have something. Yeah, they made it sound like as you know, like a mutation, but that opens up like like a bunch of other future possibilities for people's like quirks abilities, where they can just make them sound like even more broken. Um, but I guess we'll just have to just we'll just have to find out. I mean, to be fair with Chisaki and Eri's powers, it's been so open-ended that there's no way you can kind of put a limit limitation on their powers. So, um, yeah. again, I feel like they're living open-ended, so later on the road they can use it as a plot device. Well, I, well, yeah. I, guess we'll I mean, I guess. I mean, I, I feel like they, they leave it open-ended, open 
they leave it as an open i don't know how to say the sentence but we got, it, we got it. it's like open ended <laughs> to a point where it's like they do it that way so that we're still interested in these characters and what they can or are about to do that's this is literally the only reason that they have it open like that well it seems like next episode is probably like the kind of the wrap up episode yeah. so maybe they, they yep. have one more episode to explain stuff um also like like night eyes i'm sorry I'm like completely changing subjects but like at the end when night eye was was saying like how he couldn't see the like the future or, or he didn't see like that vision I, I don't know why i was like, expecting it to be like different or epic but i'm, I'm guessing like uh, the reason why he couldn't see it is because like he, he couldn't like he, he can't he, he's not able to predict with Ares like a uh, cork just because it's just like you know she's yeah that that that's pretty much what i came down to yeah as well it's like he, he there's mm-hmm. no way anybody's on nobody and their mother except for chisaki knew whether what her cork did granted yeah. like this I mean, dude has the ability to see into the future but it it goes it, like if you go into the future and then you change something that's gonna happen you just completely throw that entire quirk of seeing the future out the fucking window because you have like outsourced thing like airy and it's just you go through like a multi-dimensional shit and it's actually annoying i hate I multiverse <laughs> multiverse yeah. theory you, you go through you go through that's like he is dr strange and he's yes. seen all these multiple different universes, and he picked the wrong one to see into the future. It's I hate it. Well, it's so. Uh, I think the only reason why he was wrong like this one time is because basically because like with Ares' ability, because it's just like because if she's like rewinding, uh, she, if she's rewinding time in a way or changing it like in that sense, I, I, I'm like, I'm guessing like his quirk just can't see that. I'm like yeah, at that point it's like. But everything of like actuality, like he he can he can predict and see. So I think this is kind of like a like a wrap up for Night Eye, like just knowing that his quirk is not. Uh, it's not. It's not. Full, it's not a hundred percent. Yep. I think it's. I think it's more because like um because he still has like he still likes All Might so much that I think he's just like kind of thinking like oh my god maybe he won't die there's still a chance. I mean one, once you discover a, a, a character like Aerie and that kind of quirk it's it it changes the entire yeah. view of seeing the future because you have a person yeah, that guys. can legit change your body state into a previous one in the past it's like okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> your but, future uh... scene isn't gonna see that shit it should but it's not. Yeah, but to bring back to like Sasha's point earlier is there's basically the, depending on how they use Ares' uh, power for the plot from here to from this point forward, there's really no feel of a consequence anymore. Basically, there's no, I, I guess there's no really conflict that they would ever have. If something were to go wrong or someone to get fucked up, like Ares can just rewind them back and everything's That's what I really hope doesn't happen. Well, like... the only thing is we don't know, like we don't know, like what, you know, like what happens when she uses like her her quirk as much as she's, as she's been using it. Uh, they don't know, like 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 how Brian was saying before, like we don't know if there's like a cooldown period. We don't know if there's like repercussions. You know, like, but if, it, if she's it could time, happen. What... Like that's the thing. So that's what we're all yeah. worried about. Yeah. So, so just... I mean, it's more of like we'll just have to figure it out. I mean, I'm, I'm yeah. sure like it's it's something that's not just going to be able to happen right away because i just don't think she knows what's going on so i'm sure like like being in like the with like the heroes like they're, they're probably gonna figure out a way uh i would i would guess train her unless they're all of a sudden just like take her out this next episode <laughs> oh god um i mean that's still always a possibility as well i i, I don't know we'll, we'll, we'll find out and then uh Next episode, we'll see if uh, we're going to be complaining or everything else about it. But uh, I mean, actually, honestly, at this point, I feel like this show is just going to be the next sort of man. Like, well, okay, not that. Wow. I mean, until that until the next arc happens, like, dude, literally the past, like, come on, bro. Legit, the past, like, four episodes, there's three episodes, we've been shit talking this show. Yeah. Well, I don't know, uh, shit I mean, talking, people... but, like, I'm just disappointed in the arc. So, but I think for... it can bounce back. But... Yeah. And we're all disappointed in Sword Art. So, yeah. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> That's, Basically, we're, we're shit talking it, but not as bad as Sword Art. Not as bad as Sword Art, no. Yeah. But from people that I know that I actually uh, respect their opinions, they said this this was the weakest arc. You know, from r- runers who read the manga, dude. People with the but manga they... were saying like this was like a huge, like a it was like dude, that a is a Reddit mentality. There's a well, bunch like, of there's so many people who kept saying this was like gonna be a really good arc, and like you should get yeah, excited. Said that so... Sword Art. And what happened? It's like I mean, if you if you yeah. if you pick and choose certain parts of the arc, then I guess you can find the light in it. But it's like overall, I'm pretty sure for what I've heard from majority of the people that have watched the show and not read the manga, it's like overall so far this season of My Hero is like one of the worst. I yeah. I do think it's just that... not as engaging as like the other th- three seasons were. I do th- I do think though that the I think we would be think we'd be seeing this season differently if they if the the entire cast or like whoever like uh, in Bones actually was able to animate um, Lumillion's fight to like the fullest. I think that would have been a huge thing because it's just like because instead of just like kind of like it almost seemed just like flashes instead of actually um, 
instead of actually like um um like if it was just like fluent animation like you know top notch what we've seen of bones i think we would have actually seen the season as being better uh because i do think the the highlights of the season was definitely you know a couple episodes of red riot and then also Lemillion, but I think they cut Lemillion's arc short just because of that. Um, like if they if they animated like Lemillion's part, like they did this last episode, I think it would have been. I think it, people would be seeing this season a lot, like just at like higher regards than what it ended up being. Ah, uh, so I don't know, dude. You, you, even you still think so, huh? okay. Like even like I I love Lemillion as a character. Like yeah. don't get me wrong, this dude is the best hype man in the entire <laughs> show. He, if I were to have him as my best friend, dude, I'd be the happiest man on the planet. But it's like you have Lemillion, and then you have characters like the MC, like Deku, come in. Yeah, and it's like you don't feel the impact of the fights like you did in the previous big fights. Mm-hmm. That's my biggest problem. It's like when you have these last two episodes, which is Deku versus Chisaki. I just don't feel like the there was like that giant intense emotional feeling that I usually had with my hero in general. It's just it just it just isn't there. I don't know well, what it is. It might be the animation, it might be the character, it might be the story, but well, I just don't know what it is. I think it was sick to see uh what Deku can be at hundred percent. Oh yeah, sure. Um <laughs> like that that shows, really cool. the dude literally went like two <laughs> two without even yeah. trying. It's like all right, dude. But, yeah, but no matter how hype the, the fights are, the story is basically what's killing it for me, honestly. And I even if they were to animate the fights better, this is how the end product is, I still don't think I would find it like, like satisfying. I would like I would have um I would have been fine with like the story so if it had a good ending, but it didn't, so like that's then why he's not over again. <laughs> it's probably over Dude, next, next this episode. Arc is pretty much over. Yeah, it's over right? next now, episode. You, you really just said, "Friend, like, okay. oh, I think right. next episode looks like I, you know, looks like I wrap it up." That's what you literally just no. said in this section, Friend. Watch, oh. like the next episode, first ten minutes, Lamillion gets his power back. Everyone's a okay, and then the, the I, whole red is gonna rage, rage quit. I can, I can see Lamillion like well, still losing his powers, but like maybe they'll eventually they'll fix it. But but this is Reddit who said this arc was good. But the people, but people that I actually know that aren't a part of Reddit, they they said that this was the weakest arc. What if they um, are, Sren? What if they are? No, they're not. I know. I, I'm, I, <laughs> okay. I know this, Peter. Okay. <laughs> no, I haven't even talked to Peter. I like how Peter's yeah. the one you. Peter's the one that you immediately no. go to. Dude, Peter, oh yeah, okay. dude. Peter, Peter, Peter's a guy that basically says like everything's great, and then uh, proceeds to rate it as a seven. <laughs> so... Seven out of seven, right, Peter? Oh yeah. god, but no, I haven't talked to Peter at all about uh, Hero, but just like a few other people, they said this was kind of the weakest arc. But uh, I believe it honestly. Yeah, I don't know, but I but like this last episode, I, I enjoyed the animation. Uh, I, I definitely think that the, the big part of this last episode was supposed to be the reveal with Aerie and just like what her quirk is and can do. That was definitely the big part. I mean, it was like I said, it was still cool to see Deku fight because I, I felt like this should have been the last episode because last episode almost felt like really nothing happened or yeah. like Deku was uh, or Deku was like doing stuff, but not actually. Um, besides Nida just getting impaled. <laughs> Well, I mean, they had to get to the climax first before they got to the resolution. So yeah, I, yeah, I like that's the, true. I feel like the build up was fine. But again, they made Chisaki look like a total bitch. They gave Eri the cop out power that I thought they were going to give her, which I was hoping yes. they wouldn't. But we don't know how it works and yet. We, there's still the chance. Basically, she can rewind whoever the fuck she wants. She literally touched Chisaki and then uh, took confession out of him, rewinded him to the point where she took confession out of him. Yeah. And then now she's full on just healing Deku perfectly to the point right before the quirk hurts himself, but he still has the quirk on at all times. Yeah, but she can't like, stop. Right, but she's somehow controlling it perfectly. So again, well, it, it, I, I want to say she's controlling it. It's it's like ramping up as it goes. Like Chisaki said, like it's constantly ramping up. And even uh, Deku said it. Yeah. Like the the repair quality that she's doing is ramping up so fast. Like he can just keep pushing at like pat, like a hundred percent all yeah, the he time. He has to he has to keep going though, or he or it's yeah, like he right. has to push his body further in order yeah. to, to even out. Right, but again, he's able to somehow find like the perfect combination for it to be like okay the whole fight. I, yeah, I feel that, like that's that's more on Deku's side. Deku's always his... been a thinker though. He's yeah. always been like he's like he's always going like through his motions, which I thought was really cool. Where because they're actually explaining like his thought process before things happen instead of just kind of doing stuff and explaining it afterwards. Like right, you know, but... like, a lot of bad anime, they're like, oh, how did you do that? And then they stop and explain. Even even if you were to explain how it works, the fact that he she just is now able to utilize it, and then now like her and Deku are working out in perfect synergy to get this to work, I still feel like that's a cop out. Even if you explain how it works. Okay, all right. We'll find out next week.
the MC next plant episode. armor. Um, the next episode. Yeah, indeed. All right. So that's going to be it for my Hero Academia. So we'll see what happens next week. <laughs> and then next, we're going uh, to head over to High Q. This was the. So uh, not only was this a season premiere, we also had two OVAs that popped up during the same day. So uh, we're going to hang over to Stren and Ku. Um, we're going to have more people like talk more about High Q next week, I guess. But for now, we'll just have yep. Stren and Ku. Um, and, yep. then... and Brian is currently watching it, so he will hopefully be able to join us soon. Yeah, the show's trash. You no, okay. Some... okay. Go on with it, dude. You're trash. <laughs> okay, agreed. Um, do you guys want to start about is the OVA, or is, is that before the season, or yeah, yeah, it's, it's kind of before, but I think we might be better off just talking about season four because okay. I don't the know. The only thing we can mention quickly what it was, yeah, um, because it is canon. Well, yeah, but it's not really. Uh, it's not the it's not the main guy, so I don't really care much about him. But <laughs> but they're going to be um uh they're going to be I but they're like main parts from previous uh, seasons. No, they they are. But then uh I, I don't I guess it's it kind of like we don't have to go into depth. We can just basically it. we can just like say like yeah. what happened in it. Uh, it was basically just ne- Neko. It, it just showed like Neko getting into uh like what they had to do to get in order to get into nationals. Right. They had to fight the hey 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 guy. <laughs> Favorite First, guys. Yeah, it was uh basically they lost the exact same po- uh, point as uh as a uh, Hinata school. I'm blanking on their name. Uh, uh Krasino. Um, they they lost the same exact point uh before the spring uh before the spring th- tournament. It was uh whatever the previous tournament was called, and then they but then they had to do that. Then they went into the spring tournament to fight the basically Slytherin. Okay. And then they, it just showed them. Yeah, it just showed basically like well, what they had to do in order to uh, get into nationals. That yeah, and that's, that's pretty much it. It was just showing them like their journey to the yeah. national tournament. I like and, it. I actually like those characters. I like a lot of those characters. Uh, they're all right, but I, I, I usually only care about they're the main guys fine. in esports. Oh my god. Okay, Peter. Dude, there's already there's already like six or ten guys you have to take uh like remember, all right? So Dude, dude, they have a solid supporting cast. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> but but they by a solid supporting cast, they go way beyond that. It's to the point where there's like you said, almost too many, but I'm okay with it because they're actually good characters. Like, I don't hate any of them. No, like uh, I said, all the characters are enjoyable. I just don't really care much about them, about their <laughs> development, really. Okay, okay, Luffy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Get right. Uh, actually, I shouldn't even say Luffy. I should just say Peter. But Peter, um, Luffy, Kirito, same thing, <laughs> right? Yeah, that's true. But uh, anyway, but no, this uh, this episode opened up with actually the ending. Kind of like the ending to last season, where yeah. they just kind of showed them jumping on the and just seeing who could jump the highest, and then uh, their coach, kind of, not coach, but manager, uh, busting in and just saying that uh, that uh, Kageyama has been invited into the uh, team Japan uh, yep, for the youth training. nationals training yeah, camp. Nineteen or younger? Right? Yep, nineteen youth. years or younger. Okay. Yep. Yep. Um, it's, it started with that, uh, and then it also showed that there's a. Uh, the the coach from the, the just the awful coach from season three he was starting like a training camp for like first years and uh-huh. of course only Skish, only skishima was invited and of course uh hinata <laughs> uh just decides to just break in there just just big dick coming in hey <laughs> yeah. boys i'm here now yeah. it's all because skishima is just like oh it's like talking to his other friend he's like oh you could always just sneak in and yeah. of course Hinata's like good idea i'll do that <laughs> Dude runs out. It wasn't like, even there. Yeah. At first, I thought he was like crying or something. I was like, man, I wish I can go. And then all of a sudden, hey okay. guys, I'm here. Uh, but no, I actually enjoyed it quite a bit because, like you said, it rounded up like it, it tied it to the end of last season. Yep. To the point where they just finished up with the spring tournament, and now they're getting ready for the national tournament. Yep. And um, yeah, I, I was kind of hoping for more, to be honest. But I, I think they're starting up the season fairly well. And then well, yeah, the I'm whole. Just this whole training arc that's coming up now with uh, Tsukishima and uh, uh, Kageyama. Like, I- I'm kind of interested to see how they're going to like level up from this training camp. And then how the other team is going to do, too, and how to catch up with them. Yeah. Since they're kind of just training back at school. Yep. Dude, training arcs are uh, they're by far probably my favorite part of the show. Like, uh, the- all the characters, just their interactions are hilarious. Yeah. Um, yeah. It basically was like it was back to the normal comedy. Um, I also back up the point where they actually had like that review kind of at the beginning because unlike me, I just I I binged this show maybe a month ago, so it feels very new. And then, um, but right. I think this last like I think the third season came out what years ago? Uh, yeah. I'd, I'd I say a couple was, of years. Oh, that was last year, but 
I will check. Uh, uh, no, maybe. not 2019. I think it was in 2018. 2018. I think okay. it's when it. Okay. Yeah. I'll check. Um, so sorry, listeners, if you're here clicking, but I'm just checking. Out. Yeah, but to be fair though, I don't think you'll enjoy this anime if you're just picking it up this season. I would really recommend if you want to get into it, you want to start from season one, just oh, because yeah. you, you, start you won't know who these characters are. I don't know who you won't starts. Know what's... I don't know who starts a sports show like in the middle of a season. Like that'd be really yeah, weird. Yeah, I don't know. That's I, I can see it happening though. Yeah, maybe you're a guy that likes volleyball. <laughs> you're getting into anime. It's like, oh, hi, cute. It's about volleyball. That's cool. And then. You were like, oh shit, this is season four. Maybe I, I, don't I know. watch season one? No, not really. I mean just saying, if if you just started watching this, you might want to start with season like, one. Because sports Otherwise, sports shows sense. are just like they're about character development. So you you want to see the character grow throughout the the, the series. So not, I don't I don't not, know if you really want to start season knows, four. Not everyone knows that though. Or not everyone in this feels that way, I guess. But yeah, I don't know. Like I said, yeah. But like you mentioned, though, I like I said, I love watching sports animes, and I do want to go through the character development with them from see, uh, episode one. Like I said, if you're just getting to anime or you're just getting to high um, watch season one first and move up to this. So season three came out three years ago. Three years oh, ago. Wow. Okay. Yep. okay. Jesus. Um. Yep. <laughs> so it's been a while for a lot of people. I know a lot of people have been waiting forever, and I just got to. I only had to wait one month. Yeah, nice. to be honest with you, after nice. the end of season <laughs> nice three, I did not think they're gonna do a season four because there was no announcements or anything like that. Oh, and all of a sudden, it's like so not only it's did, so not, big in Japan though. Not only did they, they, yeah. they do here. season four, well, it's gonna be twenty five episodes. Mm, yeah, but it's split yep. between, it's split between uh, winter and then summer. No, okay, yes. that's fine. Wait, so are you sure? It, yeah, it has it's it split. As... It's split between okay. winter and summer. Damn, that's okay. gonna suck then. It has it listed as 25, but then yeah, I know it, it got it, it is, or not. It's 25, yeah. Um, so 12 this yeah. season, and then 12 or 13 this season, and 12 or 13 in yeah, the summer. Usually, usually anime lists like uh, like they set they set things up to where it's like like uh, where they'll have like just this certain amount of it. But oh, they they changed it. Never mind. Okay, it's 13 now. Get because wrecked. uh, before yeah, before because yesterday it was actually set for 25. Um, so they they changed they it. They announced it like Anime News Network like a while ago. So that's that's what I know. Yeah. So it, it took forever well, for anime lists to to update it then. Um, well, I find it kind of weird too because most sports animes they kind of just do it all at once rather than have yeah. a break in between. Yeah. So I find it to be kind of weird. Because I think so... I think it's production IG that does. <laughs> IQ, so they're probably yeah. I don't know they're busy with anything else, but oh. just a lot of anime a lot of anime studios in general are just so busy for like the past like the past year and then they gotta be busy this year and I think next year too. They're just all booked. So There's... I think that they, just... have, they have to take a break because they because they're having trouble probably just probably having trouble finding animators in general. I have uh, one little gripe about the show. Um it's the same studio that did the previous seasons, but for some reason they, they decided to change the animation style. Um yeah. I don't... I don't really know why they did it now. Uh, people were saying to, to so it, it it's it's more similar to the manga, but I like the previous season's animation more so far than what they've shown. I mean, I'm sure it's just it's going to change because when I first started watching Haikyuu, I couldn't stand their faces through the nets uh, right. for the animation. It kept bothering me. I'm like, make your faces behind the net. Maybe they fixed it. <laughs> <laughs> nope, they didn't. That was immediately the first thing I noticed. I was like, well, glad to see that's still there. Um, oh damn. All right. <laughs> so, so that's still there. Um, so far, the animation just like it doesn't flow as 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 well. I mean, I think it, I, I'm sure it's like from before. Like you're just gonna get used to it. I don't think it's gonna be that big of a deal. It's. I mean, I think the show is that good. Yeah. But uh, I, I don't know. It's just like it just feels like a weird point to do that. It's like you're in the fourth season. I don't know. I don't know why you wouldn't have done it maybe the beginning of second season. Um, mm. Instead of just deciding to do it now. Um, I do think it's an easier animation style than what they were doing before. So uh, I'm not sure if they just did it to save time, but uh, so far it's the animation's just n- not as good as the previous seasons. Yeah, or I don't the know. style it's, is just different. Um, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say it's worse, but it is different, and it did kind of bother me at first too. But yeah. I kind of want to wait and see until they actually play a game. Yeah, and see how true. that animation is done, and then I can yeah. kind of judge it. From- yeah, that's true. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm already sure I'm going to get used to it. Uh, I mean, I got used to their faces through the nets and just those those things. So we'll see. True, but I don't know. Uh, do you think this? Uh, the, do you think these thirteen episodes is going to be the the whole training arc, or do you think it's going to be not that long? I want to say after um, after the thirteenth episode, it might just be them leading up to the national tournament, and then maybe the next, the last twelve episodes is going to be them at national tournament. Okay. All right. I wonder how far they're going to get nationals, and if it's just like twelve episodes, because uh, that's a lot to compress or 
to you know to actually considering last season was one match. I mean, in all honesty, so, they might do how they did it uh, last season, where they basically did one season for the whole tournament, and then for the final, do like another season or movie to do the whole match, like how they did oh, yeah. against uh, was Shiratori or whatever, or mm-hmm. like the last one where they did the. the yep. So it might just be like that. I'm not yeah. sure. Yeah, I mean, I've liked the show so far. I don't think they're going to screw it up now. Um, I'll, uh, all I know is that this training arc is going to be sweet. I don't even know what's going to happen, but it's going to be sweet. Yeah, I don't know. Like I said, I, I don't want to get my hopes up for anything anymore because everything has been kind of a roller coaster for me. Things that I wouldn't think that I would enjoy end up surprising me, and I, I like it a lot. And the things that I have high hopes for just end up being ruined for me. So I, I don't even know anymore. All right. But so far, but so far it's a good start. Like I'm liking where they're going with this. And hopefully, with Hinata being the the ball boy, you know, hopefully he gets a chance to be part of the training. Oh, or you know something. it's gonna happen, <laughs> right? But I hope it, it, they do it well. You know, all I know, I hate that coach. Uh, it's just basically it's just because the guy, he only looks for strong people. That is it. He has no, there's like no like tactics, nothing. It's basically just like go out there, no, no, hit there, the ball there as hard as you can, so... and then call it good. No, but in the he's... third season though, like they didn't, he didn't do any of that. He basically he would call them in for timeouts. He wouldn't really say anything. He's just like, do better. And you just go back out there. Exactly. So, oh my god. He's just realistic. <laughs> Whatever. Let's just say he's real. All right. And then Hinata what? opened his eyes to other possibilities, but to be honest though, to be realistic, he's just trying to make sure he's meeting the standards worldwide, right? Yeah. Because uh, when it went to the Olympic training, even the director was like, Japanese people was always known to be a land of technique, not a land of power or height. So that's that's just the standard, really in volleyball. So yeah. But the the thing with the Shiratori's or Shiratori's our coach, you'd think that he would uh, feel for Hinata because he was in the same situation as him, but he hates yeah. him. It's just like, bro, what is your problem? The only thing I could think of is because like Hinata is actually succeeding when he failed. Um, right. That is the only thing that I hurts. see. <laughs> Dude, but you're like, okay, you're that old, man. What happens to a jolly old uh-huh. guy? And he's supposed to actually like, you know, feel for this guy instead of just, you know, writing him off and just basically just making him seem like he's just trash. No, they need someone to show him the light. So I believe that's where Hinata comes in. Because he is he is slowly starting to change his attitude now. That's why he let Hinata stay as a ball boy. Otherwise, he would have just told him to go home. Yeah, but I, you think like last season, though, because they, they had his flashbacks. So you think that that would have been the moment instead of prolonging it even longer. So that's I guess that's another thing I kind of have against the, the, like the story so far. But I'm sure they'll wrap it up fine. And I'm sure I'm going to, even though I don't care about this old guy at all. So Yeah. I mean, so far, like I said, three seasons in, and they're doing great. So hopefully season four goes well as well. Yep. I'm done. Ready for next weekend. Yeah, yeah. Wait, hopefully next week, the, next, the next couple episodes, I'm, I'm pretty hyped. So yep. hopefully cool. they do. Yep. All right. So then that's kind of, that's got to wrap it up for um, IQ. And then now those are our, our ongoing, or we have more ongoing shows we still talk about later, but we're going to start talking about uh, the newer show that, uh, that debuted. Uh, this season, so we're gonna start with uh, Infinite Dendogram. So basically, uh, this is uh, this is a VR MMO type of show. So uh, some people, some people like put this in the same category as Isekai. I don't really do that just because, like, because I'm pretty sure this guy can log off whenever he wants, so he's not trapped there. So I'm just gonna, yes, yeah. So I'm just gonna keep calling this like VR MMO, but it basically has like the same like like elements that you're used to in like a VR MMO where. It's like you know fantasy source, fantasy world. It like basically the guy starts just starts off as a beginner. Um, right now we only have him and his older brother who to, to hope that Stren likes is a bear, a, a giant bear costume. Kuma. Yeah. <laughs> it, it says Kuma at the end of every, every sentence. You don't like it? I, the, I don't know. Just it's I, you think I would like this character, but he's just annoying as hell so far. <laughs> Just because he I says Kuma at the end of every sentence? I don't yeah. know. Just like how he sounds, too. He just sounds derpy. like But the stupid derp. <laughs> like, I love derp, but not stupid derp. But he's OP, bro. Sense. He's uh, OP. I don't know, man. The MC's not OP. <laughs> so... Oh, of course not, because he's level zero. He just started. Yeah. But his older brother, uh, is, is he's OP. Except uh, he fucked up and got paralyzed, so he couldn't well, do shit. The one thing I was not expecting was him to bust out a... Wait, are we, are we spoiling? Um, <laughs> I don't know. Like, it's, Before there... it's anything else? We we mentioned the bear, but uh, I mean okay. the bear, like maybe like yeah. his we- okay. just his weapon was unexpected. Oh, I mean, um, yeah. How do you want? Like should we, should we, I think we could spoil because that's like that's we should, that's uh, fine, whatever. Like, <laughs> wait till next I mean, were you season. expecting that kind of? Yeah, were you expecting that kind of weapon to come out? Come on, be honest. Um, kind of because it was in it was on the the cover of the 
the anime. Ruiner! Like, Ruiner! It's on the cover. Oh, like, okay. So like, if it's on the thumbnail, I, I think we're fine, okay. right? Okay, yeah. yeah. Like, it's on the <laughs> okay. cover. Yeah, so, need... like, like, we, like, that's, it was, like, it was the main guy and the girl. Like, I, she was, not, they're on the cover on my anime list, so. Okay, well. I guess if you don't I'll... look look at that, then. Dude, I didn't look at it. I had no although, idea. <laughs> although, I don't remember, I don't remember the OP, so I don't know what they mentioned on the OP either, so. If, um... it, like, what's, what's on the OP, but. Did it have an OP? I don't Did remember. They? Okay, I don't remember. Like, usually OPs spoil, so. Yeah. Some shows they they wait till the second episode for openings. Yeah. Um, so I don't know yeah. if this one. I don't remember this one. Yeah. So um, um, I just want to mention. Well, actually, I don't know if I mentioned this yet, but yeah, basically, the way that this the, the game works is that so, um, there's no set there's no set like linear path that, that like a normal MMO would have. Uh, it's it sounds like a lot like the events are random and they're triggered by the players like doing like events like. So instead of like something like like WoW or fourteen where it's more like linear like questing style, I assume something like like Black Desert Online where it's like more sandbox style, and, and that's basically how he triggered mm-hmm. this quest is like because he just randomly ran into the NPC and he triggered her quest. Yeah, well, yeah, NPCs can actually just like do their own thing as well. Well, and they, they can also right. die permanently, which I thought was interesting. Um, so well, have you guys ever heard of the game called uh, like Middle Earth or whatever? They basically had a system like this, where I believe they call it the Nemesis system as well, is where basically whatever you do changes how the world is laid out. And even when you're not interacting with them, they're kind of still doing their own thing to affect the story later on in the game. Uh-huh. Uh, so I'm thinking that maybe they're they're kind of playing it around to that system, but I'm, I'm not... I'm not familiar with the game, so I can't really say. I just want to mention... Um, so the title is Dendogram. I name. Mean, I just want to mention real quick that that's a machine learning like term or concept. Basically, like um, one type of machine learning is like it's this thing called clustering, where like you take data, you take a whole bunch of data, and like you put them into groups that are similar to each other, and then eventually you so like you have one set of data that's similar to another, that's one cluster, and then you try to find another set of data that's like that's similar, that's more similar, and then that's another cluster, and you keep doing it until you finally put the whole data in like one cluster. A dendrogram is basically just like it's just visualizing that cluster as a tree, and it's supposed to show like how each cluster is related to each other. But, but basically, it's like it's machine learning. So, and you know, like a lot nowadays, like a lot of the, the hype around machine learning is that like the AI is supposed to be more intelligent that way. It's supposed to learn like humans. So, I wonder if like if part of the reason why they name it that way is because like the the um the MMO if because like it's like it's more like procedurally generated like if it's supposed to have like it feels more like a, a breed like a living world with like an ai it's kind of like kind of like yeah. how like sword arts like simulation thing was like was mentioned how they're they're all ai but they are doing they're doing things based off of like the initial human data input like i want i kind of wonder if like this mmo world is supposed to kind of be like that where like the ai have like their own they own their own personality their own lives and like yeah, basically anything could happen. So. I mean, yeah. like they kind of already referenced it, so I assume that's what's gonna happen. Yeah, so, that's so I'll say like that's like the one thing that I thought was interesting that just that the AI is it's it, like it's more freeform. There's no like like linear quests. There's no like there's no one way to play this game. Like 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 usually like other MMOs like WoW and Final Fantasy fourteen. That being yeah. said, like I mean I do have to agree with the the criticism that like it's kind of, it's so far it's kind of generic. Like yeah, super generic. Animation is generic too. <clears throat> oh yeah, yeah. there's a machine gun by the way. I don't know if we actually said the weapon. Uh, oh, I mean, when, spoilers. I wasn't even paying attention to it, like. <laughs> but like, um, I don't know. It's just... he, t- he has like the look of a of a tank, and then he busts that thing out. So <laughs> uh, I was not expecting they didn't, that. They didn't really explain like the mechanics of the game, really, besides like the questing. It's first they episode. Yeah, they they didn't really. So I assume like next episode they'll explain like how like the battles or like how magic or whatever skills works in this game, but. I'm just, I'm really just one. I'm more, I'm more interested in like the world and like how far they're gonna take like the the whole like questing and like NPC. Like I wonder if they're gonna have an actual like important NPC die later on because like players couldn't save. Or I'm wondering too like because we when the NPC was introduced, we didn't even know like she was an NPC. We thought she was. I thought she was a re- another player. Yep. And so I wonder. Like, right, right, yeah. Same. Yeah. So I wonder if they got to do more of that where they got to make you think if they're an NPC or a player or if people are. Or players are just got to role play so good that people think they're NPCs. So. Yeah, I mean, at this point, I think this, uh, I, I think they're they're going to be a story driven series because they already laid out basically what the show is going to be about, 
right? This guy who, even though they're like NPCs or they're not real, he's going to grow attachments to them and treat them as if they were a real human being. So he's going to do his best to save everyone. Yeah. Um, so with the whole unique uh, uh, game mechanic, I, I would really want to see how the world and story develops, but I don't really have high hopes for character development, honestly. Nope. I, was I mean, yeah, it's pretty generic, so... I feel like yeah. the, the, the story would have been way better if the MC wasn't already OP. Um, is he OP? He's not. He's not. With the item? Okay. We don't know okay. okay. the okay. item, though. But... Well, the item is, yes. But okay, he's a little zero. He's he took zero. out at level 210. I, so. We don't know anything about the item, but... <laughs> I mean, yeah, so... If he's, I mean, but but if, you can, if you're at level zero and you're taking out level 210, you, you're already pretty broken. I'm not taking out 210. That's the level of the, the NPC. Oh, I suppose. That's, that, that was her level. We didn't know the level of yeah. the monster. Yeah. I, well, I mean, it's, it's, it's got to be high, though, because she was yeah. struggling, too. Yeah, it's a level five difficulty quest, so it's pretty high up there. We're it not is, sure yeah. if that's like the, well, the max difficulty. <laughs> when they first said level five, and the guy's like, "Oh, but that's a really hard quest." I was like, "What?" It's just yeah, five level five. That's what I thought right. too. But I, I think like they meant like t like tier level, like yeah, tier level or, or like, yeah, five, yeah. I, I got that so, after yeah. uh, you know. But I did I, like buff, yeah, so, I did I do have to say like like just having just it didn't explain like how like his like his weapon like just basically destroyed the uh like. Yeah, it's it's very open ended right now. It's open ended. Um, I just two. I, I will. I guess we'll see. Right. Like, left right now, like uh, the the main character, he's pretty like generic. Like there's or like basically has no personality. Like yes, I don't know anything about a, the guy. So tons of personality. A, he talks he's like the same mind. as every other <laughs> main character. Just like he's not. I mean, yeah. he's like he's not OP yet, but. I'm so tired of that fucking saying already. Like it's oh, first no, episode. I was, I, was, no, I was gonna mention yeah. that too. Like. The, oh, it leaves God. a bad taste in my mouth. Like the second time I heard that, I'm like, "Oh God, please don't let this be a thing." And then it happened a third time. I was like, "God it's damn it!" It's just catchphrase. Gonna... It's a bad. It's a it's terrible so catchphrase. It's a bad thing. It's not good. Like even if it was in Japanese, oh. like if I knew what the Japanese yeah. word was, was I I don't want to hear that. Like, but yeah, that's gonna be the one thing that like that annoys me a lot. You I got one more thing. Go ahead. Ready right. perfectly. Oh my God. Wait, what? Ready per- That's from Cautious Hero. Ready perfectly was a good. Yeah, oh, it was a no, good that's a stupid catchphrase. <laughs> Dude, way better catch than it. Yeah, it's better, better than that. Okay, yeah, better, yeah, better than that, but like, it doesn't mean it does. Just because it's better than this one doesn't mean it's good. That means it's awesome, sir. No, it's you need amazing. higher standards. <laughs> Dude, okay, fine. I'm not gonna say anything more about that. But it's already like yeah. I really hope that doesn't begin. Like I, don't, I hope it's not like more of a thing than than just this. It will episode. be. That's why I have yeah, already yeah, prepared. It's, it's got. It's whatever you be. think. Yeah. It's like. Is what do you think? It's gonna be annoying. It's gonna it's gonna happen. Like yeah. you can't trust like these writers and editors not to make it annoying. Yeah, I mean, again, for like, like... a generic show like this, I would I would just say. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. I feel like the only thing mind blowing or innovative about this series will just be the story and the game design. I think that's it. Everything else is gonna be super generic. It's gonna be pretty bland. See, I I, I still think it would have been better if he was not if he didn't have like just some crazy ass item. Not not item, but like uh, whatever that thing that that uh. Remember that? Never mind. Spoilers. It's but, spoilers. Yeah. Embryo. But, embryo. Which is a weird, yeah. which is a weird name too, by the way. Like, yeah. Don't call your weapon an embryo. But they don't know it's a weapon until it hatches. Well, David, when you make your own game, you can call it whatever you want. I'm not, okay. gonna call, I'm not gonna call it embryo. <laughs> Fuck the head. But still, I I do think that the that the story would have been better if he didn't have something that was just like already like, insanely strong because you would feel like uh the like AI life would be more in danger. But now it's just feel it just right. feels like he's just yeah. gonna fly in there, just save whatever happens, and then. That's why it's generic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> plot um, armor. Plot armor. <laughs> but yes, I have man. And, oh, and one I'm... more thing before I move on. Oh. Um, I mean, I'm, I, I don't know how many episodes I'm going to give this show before I decide to drop it, but it's not good right now. The The forecast does not look very very good for the show for me. I'm only, but, um, I'm only watching just just like just to relax like when I'm in bed or something. Like not when I'm actually have to, have to think. I have no uh, life, so I'm going to keep watching it. <laughs> Would uh would you guys turn the paint sensation on? Hell no! I don't know why. I would, like why would <laughs> yes. anyone turn that? Yeah. Why would anyone turn that thing I, on? I why to, is that even an option? You need to live a little, sir. Unless like unless like someone live. someone like put a, that as a mod and that would be funny. But like I don't, I don't know. know. I heard that. Yeah, I heard that. I was like, eh, Peter would turn that on. <laughs> I would just medium though, medium, not not like all the way. Yeah, you don't want you don't want to do a sword art level. You don't want nope have to, nope. You don't want to have the pain of like the worst pain in your life. Just when you play, I don't want to like. Game. I don't want to leave the game and uh, feel like I have needles stuck in my arms or it's cut off or whatever. You don't want to feel like you're stabbed or like crushed by a giant or anything. Yeah, yeah you know. Man. Yeah, you know. 
just just I want a little I want a a little tickle, right? N- nothing too. But that's not but that's not pain then. That's just a tickle. There's no pain sensation. There is. That's that's why you have just a little like just a little bit the well, pain it's, it's, off. It's it's okay. like it's, just a bit. <laughs> when I say VR, I mean like dive tech. It's I'm pretty sure it's like they mean the dive tech. So it's like you feel it, it in is. your conscious. Yeah. You feel like like the the feeling in your in your in your brain. It's not like physically happening to you. Which, by the way, Shrey, and this place, this takes place in twenty forty three. So we yeah, got, no. only got twenty three years yeah. before we get to see yeah. this game. Before we have our own generic story. <laughs> My body is ready, sir. Because there's no way in hell that story is gonna get ready. Whatever their date is. So we got we nope. twenty forty three. I'm done. So. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So that's that's just, that's just it for Infant Tendogram. Um, we're gonna move on to um the next VR MMO title because there's a second one this season. Yes, uh, there's two. Um, it's like so the the shorthand title is Bofuri, which is like the, the combination of like the Japanese title. I'm pretty sure the English title is something like, "I don't want to be in pain, so I'll like uh, all my, my defense, max out my defense, something like that." Yeah, so we'll just call it Bofuri for Bufuri, sure. Yeah, so it's like that's the shorthand name when you abbreviate the Japanese. So, um, just so far it's just gonna be yeah, me and Ku. Um. This one, like, I thought this one was way more generic than, uh, than Infant Dendogram, because at least Dendogram had, like, mm-hmm. the, it had, like, the, the, just the non-linear, and, like, quest structure to keep me kind of interested. This one is just, like, someone just literally just bought a game, and, like, the whole appeal is just, like, they just max out the vitality. Yeah, so if you want something more serious, I think Infinite Denogram might be more up your alley. It's not really that but serious, though. This, it's just... Right, right. But what I'm saying is if you want something a little bit more serious, that's what you'll yeah. go to. But this VR MMO anime series is basically, I think it's just for, for laughs or entertainment, just, it's, comedy. The whole, like, right. yeah, the whole, the whole appeal is just, like, she's maxing out. Yeah. yeah, you got this noob that's playing this game for the first time. She's never played an MMO before, and then she doesn't want to get hurt, so she maxes out her defense, and then that's pretty much the premise of the the series and now you just follow her on her adventure as she explores the world like max not i have like okay i'm like way overthinking this because it's not the type of show but like i really hate like the game design and like the balance they have for this because yes. she gains like resistance so fast because i understand like having game systems where like because there's so many games where like when you do something you get the skill for it like but she gets them so fast in this, this first episode right like, and she's only like she's only like she started out like like you know low like you know level one whatever and then even at the first after the first episode she's only like level 18 but she still gets way too much resistance yep i mean but I, like i said i think it's more like based on how she gained poison resistance the first time i think this game that or this the author did this on purpose to kind of just showcase that yeah it's not that serious she's slowly or she's rapidly gaining all these skills <sighs> and that's that's just the, the problem is like there's like other isekais that have this kind of like similar like, like structure to help like they gain uh, people gain skills like this and just it's just so overdone and i i get like it's a mm like an actual mmo mm-hmm. but right it's just i'm tired of like of because when people do this like you can tell they don't play games like they or it's like a writer that thinks that this is what like gaming and mmo is and like i'm just tired of that mm-hmm. like like or it just sounds like someone like you just yeah, just never like never put games but don't understand anything about like balance or whatever so it's just make, it just makes it less fun like well maybe he's just catering to catering to the new generation because <sighs> okay, you know how okay. they say that the new generation they they're not as good mechanically so you have to make it easier no, you, you don't lower, you don't lower you don't lower your standards uh well they've been doing it for the past two one or two decade now so i mean that's just how it is gamers nowadays just aren't as mechanically skilled as oh, gamers from the like get-go from what, like whatever. like nintendo like if you were to compare the the difficulty of games from like the the genesis uh super nintendo era to like now it's way more difficult than now it is but like a lot of like, the difficulty basically back, a lot of the difficulty back then was like artificial difficulty where like it was hard on purpose so you would spend more time doing it or it's like you have to do things by trial and error where no i mean not even that like even if you want to compare like between region japanese gamers are supposedly more mechanically skilled than na supposedly, players yeah. so supposedly right so that's why oh, okay. in some japanese games <laughs> 
no like seriously this is how it was like back in the mid 90s or late 90s or early 2000s basically they made the japanese games a lot harder and then when they ported the games over to the na or different regions they actually dumbed down the difficulty so like other regions wouldn't like rage quit and that's literally what they did and nowadays games they give you tutorials and they hold your hand the whole way there so you'll be comfortable to play the game okay that's, before that's something go. else i'm not gonna okay. mention it for this show because it doesn't deserve it so that's we're gonna leave it at that that's that's something we're else. better at games <laughs> okay sadly uh, enough we're better barely but yeah, that, I mean, that's, like that's said, something that. else I'm, I'm not going that topic i just want to just no i'm not saying maybe that's what the author is going for but no, uh, like i said it, i don't think this is supposed to be taken seriously i think it's more of just a comedy slash entertaining show and uh i actually i actually think the mc is pretty funny i actually enjoy the character uh she reminds me of darkness uh and uh in the sh- if if I think I mentioned it to David already, but if this was Darkness in, in her younger days, and she was the main hero of uh, Shield Hero Rising, I think this is what you would get. It feels she doesn't, like she doesn't get off like getting hit, though. She just like she doesn't want to get hurt, whereas Darkness does want to get hurt. That's not fun, then. Uh, I don't see the comparison I, I at like all. Just, like, I feel like I feel like she could develop into Darkness because Darkness is like well, the that's, after that's, effect. That's, that's your wishful the, thinking. That's not what yeah. actually happened. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's nothing to do then that, that was a horrible comparison nothing to do with darkness no i told you that's what i feel like no and you know no, maybe no, i hope that's the case but no that, it's probably not it's probably not the case it's a horrible comparison no uh, no i don't think she, so she doesn't she doesn't want to feel pain that's why that's the whole point of like the whole feel the show she doesn't want to feel pain so she maxed out her defense david she's she's like she's like 10 years old right now and darkness is like mid 20s or whatever she's like, so she's, maybe, she looks young so maybe she's when like, she grows up like high school age uh it's the, it's she's a, in it's, school i don't know it's a thing like they do like where like they look super young but they're probably like 16 or something yeah. it's i'm pretty sure it's like an art like design like character design choice or something oh they look like they're in middle school they do or elementary that, school other or like they do like other um other shows do this too but like you know, you know, David. Maybe once she grows up, she realizes that she developed a a fetish for this, and then that's how oh she became God. darkness. Okay. Who knows? Like Kimono Michi. Yes. <laughs> okay. I don't know, but like I said, I, I don't know. I'm just throwing shit out there. But again, it's I find it to be interesting. Do you have anything um, that's actually related to the show? Um, the game mechanics are busted, and that's pretty much it. Because there wasn't I just, really, I don't feel like there's anything really concrete, like anything amazing about this, this episode. It's just or the this whole like, it's just the whole like, yeah, the whole, just her being a one trick in defense, basically. Right. So I can see her getting picked up by a party. They're just gonna throw her out there in the middle of a raid battle, or whatever, and then just have her tank everything. But so. I was gonna say, like again, like I'm probably overthinking this because this is a comedy, but like just, just even just like trying one trick, like like vitality or defense like i mean yeah she was slow but like even just like putting all of it in defense doesn't mean you're completely immune to damage that which is what this show was doing like it kept saying like because basically anyone could put it all in 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 like vitality and defense and then it'd be they'd be just as good as her but they made it sound like she was special because she was the only one doing it but they didn't show like any sure. they didn't show like any drawback to her like playing all in defense which again like horrible balance you know game design balance so is that the reason why the the game seems broken because she doesn't get punished yes. she basically doesn't okay. get punished for putting it all in defense besides being slow but she doesn't get yeah but she they're saying that because it she puts it all in there like she like doesn't get any she doesn't get hit at all like taking any damage which is so dumb no well t- to be fair they did um uh showcase that even though her defense is high there's ways to get around it like with the poison with the poison yeah uh, but like even and, but... then, and then without without spoiling it they uh like towards the end they did kind of uh find like a loophole as to why the mechanics is really busted which kind of threw me off as to why they did it that way but they do find a workaround between her whole defense thing but the thing is, like, every game, like, if you ever, when you max out your defense, you still take damage. That's the thing. And, like, she basically was, like, getting hit by everything and still not taking, like, she wasn't, like, her her HP wasn't going down at all. So, that's, like, my, 
that's like one of the, my, my biggest things like that and like this how fast like she gains like skills mm, yeah but again without spoiling it I, I feel like they did address that but probably just not to your uh to your standard probably no it did not just the game is busted it is very busted but like i said so. it's it's i find it to be interesting and i don't <laughs> i don't know i don't know i mean so far it's her i assume like her friends got joined soon maybe like next episode but i just well, I mean, I don't based really on the op see, i don't really see like any other i don't know i don't know if the characters really uh like the like, game will be fixed next patch yeah, indeed right. just like just no like, but <laughs> yeah yeah, in, in the OP though, uh, the the final scene of the OP, uh, they did show a party that she was like walking up towards. So I think she will have a decent party. Uh, like her friend that introduced her to the game, of course, is going to be part of that party. Yeah, but like, it's, but... there's just no point in like and having any situation because you know she's just gonna tank everything and she'll be fine. Well, it's the first episode, David. Maybe there'll be something later on, right? They're just setting up the premise of what it can be it right just, now. It was Give just some time. Then. No, yeah, just, David. It was just like a really bad setup, just because like the the way she, they abuse like the game mechanic that, and she didn't get punished for it. And I'm pretty sure she wasn't the first one to try something like this, so I don't know why. It makes it sound like she's special for it. Well, let's wait until next episode, and then I can dive deeper into it because I feel like I'm not the only like said, they did, they you're did justify. It. I don't. That's see, fine, sir. I don't see like any other like point for me to watch it, but just to talk about with you. But like, yeah. I don't, well, I, Stratton's gonna watch it too, right? <laughs> I don't. Yeah. Yeah. I don't ever. I can't like ever recommend this. I mean, even just like just like just having the background, just it's it's just it's it's whatever. Like. Yeah, I can't. I mean, I can't really animation find, is not that great. I can't really find any good either. points. So. Yeah, if animation was like, if it was better, I think I would give it a shot. But I like just from like the the PV, I. Uh, I kind of just base stuff a lot on like PVs and just kind of like the the, the main artwork, um, which mm-hmm. I mean I'm, I'm sure I miss a bunch of good shows because of it, but I also save a lot of time and avoid bad ones. Or you miss out on some gems. But that is just my opinion. So, and my ways <laughs> of ways of watching shows. Yeah, yeah, and no, I hear you. So, like I said, animation kind of threw me off, and. Like I said, it's nothing groundbreaking, nothing amazing, but I mean, like I said, it, it's entertaining. If you have nothing to do, I, I would to do, give it a shot. Literally, yeah. I'm Indeed. already watching a show with somebody who has a shield, and that's fake Grand Order. <laughs> we'll get there, Ugh, sorry, don't worry. Get that shit out of there. We'll get there, don't worry. Um, so that's gonna be it for both Fury. Yes. And then we're gonna move on to Darwin's game, um, because we actually we actually talked about this last week. That was episode one, so this is episode two. Last week was an hour special though. And this one is only just like a regular, like, like, like you know, twenty minute episode. So mm-hmm. basically, right. uh, this time, I mean, we see a little more of the interaction between um, the main character and Shuka, and they mm-hmm. the big thing is just like like uh, the event is about to start, the treasure hunt event. Yes. And so, um, basically, like the, and I guess I think too, um, yeah, uh, the the leader of the clan from last week that was like. Uh, murdering everyone uh, uh wang ryu i think no it was like it was like wang from what were the, the clan oh no 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 uh i think his name was ace or part of the ace clan no, he the, was the leader ace, of the ace, the yeah, ace, ace clan. clan his name is wang and yeah. he was part leader the leader of the ace okay. clan so i think he's in yeah. the treasure hunt game yes uh and, he yeah. he basically destroyed that girl that tried to uh, yeah. do a sneak attack on him which was i think his power may have something to do with like countering or something of that nature because uh, he got lit up, and then all of a sudden, you see that girl being tossed aside and dying. I just, so. I didn't think anything, but I just thought like he was just stupid strong and just like just threw her off or something. So, oh yeah, he's probably I, super busted. I didn't like think anything, anything about. It. I don't think like this show is like that kind of deep. Like, I don't know. I don't see it like being like going in depth about everyone's abilities like that. But we'll see. Yeah, I mean, I think right now they're just trying to set up the arc. So this episode, since it's only like twenty minutes, there's really not much to go off yeah. on. It's basically just yeah. I mean, uh, so, like other stuff did happen, but like the main thing is like they got sent to the the treasure hunt event, and based so basically you there's like I think it was like what three hundred players, but and there's you have to collect I think three rings. I forgot the number. Yeah. It was like yeah, three rings. Three rings. Yeah. So and it, then if it, you don't collect three rings, you are you game over. Game over. So you pretty much die. So, yep. 
but uh yeah i don't know it's it's kind of showcasing the interaction or the relationship development between uh the mc and a girl right um and i guess it's showcasing more of the um that that chick that's behind computers or whatnot oh like yeah the, her the, the uh, breaker yeah Booker? yeah and they introduced a new character too uh, i think his name was inu kai he's a he's a brawler is that, um, is that the, the guy who fought the yep okay. that fought, I, uh, I don't remember Konami. his name at all so yeah so uh i guess he was interested in konami because he was the guy that he's yeah total newbie but he defeated the rookie hunter and he defeated the undefeated queen, uh, which is now his his clanmate. So well, they didn't make uh, a clan because like she oh yeah yeah she yeah, wants yeah, they're, him they're to, friends now. It's it's weird. Right. It's like she wants him to make the clan, even though she you have to be at what rank a I think B or A two or something a, a something A two I think. And she's like A four, and but mm-hmm. like she could make she so technically she could make one and have him join, but she says oh stuff like this like the guy should take the lead. I'm like oh my god whatever fucking double standards but uh like, yeah she wants the guy to take the lead i guess so he's got to level up and create the client himself so, um uh, but i mean it shows that he's like i said it shows uh like some kind of character development and it shows that he's actually fairly competent like even when he uh was about to get like messed up by the the brawler uh he was able to outsmart him and then grab a hold of the guy's phone and threaten to make him surrender I mean, so sure. this guy is three and all right now like in his sure. match history you know. but like, I'll just say, like, just compared to the first episode, the first ex- episode had, had a lot of action because, I mean, it was an hour long, so to be fair, but even yeah. just, like, just the opening, just because they had two, I mean, they had the the opening battle, then they had, like, the battle with, like, the, the, the mascot, the panda mascot, and then the battle against Shuka. Like, there's a lot yeah. of action going on, and, like, and even though, like, the premise, like, if you ever, like, read those, like, like, those death games or those, like, survival battle, like, mangas with, like, a with like phone apps it's pretty much all the same but even if you did like the first episode was actually pretty exciting because there's so much action going on and now it's like it's calmed down for this one and we'll see how it goes yeah. for the treasure hunt event it could like they could have more action but i mean usually like stuff like like shows like this they usually have all the exciting stuff first and then just it's just downhill from there so yeah, I think I think we mentioned that last week, right? Like it shows it has a lot of promise, but that was a forty minute episode, so it's just hopefully we've seen it so many times where like hey, it's it's a cool intro and then it just goes downhill, like they just do nothing. Yeah. So. Yeah, because I was hoping that even though they didn't showcase the fight between the the Ace Clan leader and that one Fire Girl when the treasure hunt started, uh, it was like whatever. But uh, when konami and inukai was fighting against each other in the alley i was kind of hoping for for more of an action scene but that was cut short too so that was kind of disappointing so we'll see and yeah i want to yeah i don't know it's it's hard it's hard for me to get my hopes up because i've seen i read so many of these mangas and that's the thing too again like we're not we're not gonna we're gonna, after this uh the 12 episodes or 11 episodes we have they're still gonna be playing the game so I hope that the last arc is gonna be is at least exciting and has like a cool fight because that's all I can hope for. Right. Yeah. So. But uh, yeah, I think that's it for me. Like I said, there wasn't really that much to go off yeah. on. Yeah, the same. So that's gonna be it for Darwin's game. Um, we're gonna move on next to ID Invaded. Um, so this we're gonna talk about the, f- the first three episodes because that's what's available right now. Because the first two episodes was previewed like a while back and then it basically came out mm-hmm. it basically i think it came out like basically last week right after the podcast aired so we didn't get to talk about it like last week but so that or so two episodes aired last week and then the third episode actually aired earlier today so yep. we'll be talking about that too so i just we'll just go all the way back to the beginning because um I, i'm actually pretty interested in this show but like it first because it, it starts off with um basically the main character he gets sucked into this weird world where everything's floating into pieces and he's like he's in pieces too and then like he eventually like we find out he can bring them all together because they're in a house and then you find out later that it's like kind of like a murder mystery he has to solve the murder of well i mean there's one like one girl is murdered in like right away but then like you find out later that he they're in this thing called the well it's like Yes. made up 
you're diving into someone's unconscious and that's that makes the well it makes like this weird like place that um, the main character is diving into and he's basically trying to like um i don't know what would you say because he's, he's like he's trying to go inside the mine and just see what he knows or like uh so, something like that so when he dives into the because uh, he's a detective and every time that he dives into that world he loses memories of who he is oh, yeah, or yeah, why he's there. That, yeah and then uh whenever he goes into someone's subconscious or someone's well uh he sees a person that's already dead he sees a girl called uh i think his name is uh Kairu. Kairu, uh, Kairu. yeah and then she's kind of like the 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 clue that that starts him off like oh i know her her name is Kairu. Like, she's dead. I'm here to solve her mystery. My name is blah, blah, blah. I'm here to solve this mystery. And then it goes off from there. His name's Sak- Sakaido. So. Sakaido, right. And, uh, yeah, so basically they, they create their own world. And with the help of Kairu and uh, the hint that she supposedly gives to uh, Sakaido, he, he slowly tries to unravel the mysteries of that world, that subconscious world and uh try to figure out who the murderer is or where he is and stuff like that like it they they throw in some mechanics that are, that are kind of like out there and far-fetched and they don't really give you the viewer any clues or what to go off on to try to solve the mystery they're just basically saying hey just just tag along for the ride and you'll you'll see how it all sorts itself out that's kind of like my one complaint so like because like the whole premise is really interesting because the first two episodes, I was like, I was really trying to figure out what was happening because it, it was presenting itself as a murder mm-hmm. mystery, but then they kept revealing right. like st- like more and more stuff. It's like okay, like you can't really figure this out on your own. Like you just, they have to tell you like what's happening and stuff. So that's <laughs> that's that's like my because I really wanted to try to solve it, but then like they just you can't really. So yeah, it's like those those questions from those word problems in elementary school where they say you know this person has this, this person has that. Um, like, do you have enough information to solve the, the the question? And then there's an answer that says, no, not enough information was given. And then that's basically the, t- the premise of this. Oh, yeah. I don't remember um, that, but um, but I think it's because, like, it's leaning towards more story than, like, than being an actual, like, mystery. Like, so. Yeah, definitely it's more story driven. Because uh, I guess uh, the way that they describe it is, is. Well, I, I I guess it's kind of weird. Um, like the first two episodes, I forget which one it was, one or two. Uh, they say that the only person who can dive into these wells is someone that's killed before. Yeah, that's the first episode. I'm pretty sure. Is it or right? Maybe, well, and then it actually brings me episode two. Now I forgot. Yeah, yeah, yeah one or two. I, I kind of forget because yeah. I I watched all three episodes yeah. in the same day, so they kind of just like blurred in together. <laughs> um, but then uh, apparently, um, once uh they solved the mystery for the the first arc the first murder uh the the one of the girls that was part of the same agency as a kaido apparently she supposedly now has ability to dive into these wells as well and she at first she said she wanted to dive into her own well but then the detective mentioned that you know you you can't dive into your own sub- subconscious because once you're aware of the unaware then your your whole world just flips upside down you're stuck there um, so apparently she hasn't killed anyone yet, but apparently now she's able to um, dive into wells as, as well. If I, I wasn't if really like had... following that explanation when they did it in the show, so like I understand, yeah, like I, don't... I, I understand like um, the main character, like because he killed, so that's why he can dive in. And it and the thing right. is too, um, like you can die in the well, and you, I, I think like it's really painful or something, or like or you're you get like, yep. a, like your subconscious, like you feel a huge pain when you die. Mm-hmm. So like you, so like the the main character when he's diving in, he's trying so hard not to die, but I guess you can always jump back in if you die. So there's not not really the only really stakes that there are is like it just I guess it, if you guess if you do it a lot, it's painful and you might like lose clarity of what you're doing. And I think you yeah, also, I, I, think you also, I think you also reset your memory each time too, when you yes every every yeah. time you dive you lose your memory and then um I guess the best way to compare it would be. You know how if you were to have a dream and you have a really intense dream where, like, say you, you're at this murder mansion, there's a guy chasing after you, and then he finally, like, stabs you and then you wake up? I'm assuming that's what it's going to be like. Like, you can still kind of feel the shock from getting stabbed or getting hurt in a dream and it wakes you up. Um, and I'm, I'm guessing that's what he goes through. 
but in episode three, he he constantly states to himself that he doesn't he's not there to try to survive. Like he doesn't care. He just needs to do his best to yeah. find out who the murderer is. So he's constantly di- dying trying to figure out who the murderer is. Piece all the clues together, and um, at at first, this is why I say it's kind of weird. Like the first two episodes, um, he mentions that when he dives into uh, a new well, he loses all his memories. But for some reason, in the last episode. Even though he died so many times, he was still able to kind of like remember the previous clues that he was getting before before he died. So I didn't I, I didn't know what that was about. Maybe it's like maybe it's when you dive into different people as well, you lose all memory. But then like I think when you're in the same one, you you might like subconscious like subconsciously remember being in that well, and so it's easier to right. get it back. That's the only thing I think of. Like they didn't explain it much, so yeah. Like I said, it's very horrible explanations, but it's it's still pretty. It's, uh, I'm excited uh, though, cause like it, I, I really like the premise, so I'm ready for whatever. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. I, I like it a lot. But I should also mention that the main character's voice is Shisaki, so I could like, cause like the whole three episodes, I just kept hearing Shisaki like being the main character this whole time. <laughs> so. yeah. yeah, and then like when you kind of see who he is, uh, because like the the MC when he. When he dives in, he's actually he looks like a different person than how oh, he really yeah, he looks like in really IRL. weird, yeah. Yeah. So then uh like when he dives in, you, you can't really picture Shisaki's voice being an MC, but when you go back to the real world, because he is a prisoner yeah. of that facility that does yeah. this, um, you, you can kind of see how he resembles someone that would have like Shisaki's, I guess, personalities or qualities. Yeah. Um, and then I'm just gonna mention this too, um, like because they mentioned that um, uh, Kairu, like the girl, like she's in every well. So I like, guess like that's like the mystery. Like, is they even they even like said I think it was like the second episode. Like, so they don't know why she's um in every like every well no. that's being dove into. No. Uh, actually, I I think uh that person, whoever that person is, that's that's the clue to help you solve a mystery. That's dependent on the person that's diving in. Yes. Did they say that? Uh, I, I think so. I think, they, the, I think I think they I think they said that um, when they found when they were going through the data, they found her in like they they found um, her and they found John Walker in like the the data. Yeah. So yeah, John John Walker was the one that I think they were having issues with, like trying to figure out why he's always there and why is it that every time he shows up, all the uh, the made up people of that well is like scared for their life. Um. So I maybe I missed that, but I know for sure John Walker is the um like the character of significance that they can't figure out why yeah. he's always there. But I think I think Kairu is actually due to Sakaido being a guy that's always diving in. Okay, I need to go back and check because I think I'm I don't know, I'm not sure about that. I think I thought they said that she was also like something they they can't explain why she's in every well they dove into. Yeah. I, one okay, I kind of like I'm kind of I have like kind of like a hypothesis on John Walker because they don't have a clear face on him. I think he might because he might be like like just some random person on, on the internet that just says he's John Walker but no one's like say <laughs> no one says like his name or showed his face so he just like he just found like a random forum somewhere like like 4chan or something or, or 2chan and he, oh, he, he just like says my name is John Walker or something like that and I think that's what people's idea of what he looks like is. So kind of like how like in Steins Gate, like the person full sun on 4chan saying I'm a time traveler. It's like, uh-huh. I, I was like kind of getting that vibe from, from him. I mean, I could be wrong, but like that's kind of what I was feeling. Yeah, so. I feel like you might be diving a little bit too deep there. <laughs> which in... We'll see. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, I don't know, man. 4chan's pretty powerful. Uh, the internet's a scary place. So maybe that's why everyone's scared. Damn. Oh, John Walker. I, um... It's such a generic name, too. It... Like, what the fuck? Really? John Walker? I anyway. mean, that. That could be anything, it's, honestly. It's, in anime, it's always either generic or it's like some really weird name, like some obscure name. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. <laughs> all I just want to mention too is that um that like because the first episodes was basically like one case, and then the third episode yes. was like its own case. Like I don't know. I thought the first two episodes were really interesting, mm-hmm. like because that well it was like it was like broken up into a bunch of different pieces, and like he was like putting together like. Like, like the house was broken up into different pieces, and he had to like put it together, and then eventually, the city was broken up into p- different pieces. 
and he was putting that together that was like way that was really interesting but then like the third well it was just like a, a, just the, the tower or whatever and they didn't really do much of it so i was it was it was just disappointing to do that coming off the first case um yeah yeah to be honest i think every time you dive into some subconscious it's always going to be some kind of puzzle that you have to solve yeah but i, like, I feel just, like that's going to be the premise of it i mean because I can... in the for, for the third one he was stuck on a he was stuck on a tower that that no one knew what was going on like why they couldn't pinpoint where the sniper was or whatever and then they finally figured out oh it's actually the tower that's moving and that's the puzzle right you had to realize that the tower itself was moving and the sniper itself wasn't moving at all he was just standing still and that's how he was, he was able to get his shots off every time and I'll, I'll have to agree that actually with the the third well, it wasn't that like innovative or interesting. But the way that they wrapped up that episode, I think it made it worthwhile because I uh, think it was I don't know. I mean, nice. I, I just like just from both visual and just like mechanic standpoint, like it was just it was disappointing that I mean, I wish I kind of wish that the whole well system was like just based off the first one, like just having all the broken pieces and then putting them together. I would love mm-hmm. just to have the yeah. whole thing be just like that. And when they have to switch it up and they don't do anything ex- as exciting as the first one, it's just kind of disappointing. <laughs> kind of make it like Persona where if it's not interesting anymore, just log out, deal with real, real life stuff, and then dive back in later when you have more stuff to work off. Because I agree, though. They did have a lot to work off of. Like with the whole, with the world is fragmented and then yeah. this guy has to slowly piece it back together and make it a whole. I, I totally can see them stretching that out to 12 episodes. Yeah, that would have been really history. cool. But... Yeah. But overall, I'm, I'm really um excited for this show. Like, I, well, I mean, like, I guess, like, it feels, I don't know, it feels like, I don't know, exciting, but like, I'm interested. Like, it definitely has caught my interest. Yeah, it really pulls you in. Like I said, it's been three episodes, and I've been like, like uh, paying so much attention to it every episode, every minute of it. So I, I really enjoy it. It's it's really nice. Yeah. Um. Sorry, one second. Um. So I think that's gonna be it for ID Invaded, and then we're gonna um, move on next to uh science fell in love i actually don't remember what the full title of this was but basically um this is the one where uh there's the two scientists and they're trying to prove that they're in love with each other yeah it's um, it's i guess you would call it a rom-com right is that what yeah, it is i would call it a rom-com <laughs> or like i comedy i guess i mean there's romance but it's definitely more comedy yeah and they say if you love kaguya uh sama you you would love this uh anime apparently so i'm I'm assuming it was top uh, for you. i guess I, I mean i i guess i can kind of see but i feel like it's its own thing yeah yeah no it, it kind of is um yeah and then i, I guess i want to say like the main character and uh the main character female is actually pretty uh pretty enjoyable or like really likable especially uh the female i think her name was um himura uh, himuro himuro yeah yeah, yeah himuro and then yukimura was the the guy yeah and then they have like they're they're both they're what they're called science type so they're they lack common sense but they're really book smart and then himuro turns out that she has a crush on yukimura and she loves him so then when she announces her love to yukimura the guy just can't take it because it doesn't make like uh reasonable sense so now they're trying to figure out how to prove that someone really loves each other or not. And then they have the assistant uh, called Kanade. And she's kind of like the one that's smart, but she's also more has more common sense of both of them. And she's trying to be like the middle ground to kind of judge like if their experiments are going to work or not. Yeah. So I was kind of worried about like when the first episode was starting. Oh, I should mention too that the three episodes aired on the same day. So we're, we're going to talk about the three episodes again. But I was kind of worried. I thought it was going to be like the whole, like, kind of like, like Sheldon from Big Bang Theory, where it's like, this oh, is, yeah. <laughs> where it's like, this is not how, like, how scientists are. Like, they're just, like, just making fun, like, they're making fun of, like, just, just scientists being, like, socially inept and, like, not understanding relationship. And I don't know, like, I don't, I would, like, I don't like when things that happen where they don't show off, like, like, because people are, like, think that like just because like you know it's like that stereotype like if you're smart or you're a scientist you you're just like socially awkward don't even think about relationships they don't i wish it would show off like scientists as more as 
normal people, but this is a comedy, so I guess, like, I can't fault it too much for that. I was just really worried that, like, it would, like, I don't know. Just... I mean, to be fair, it's only the... It's only the the two yeah it's the two MC main that are kind of like that everyone everyone else is pretty like reasonable right like the the senpai that's always asleep that plays video games she's super smart but he's she's also more realistic uh kanade the assistant she's also smart and realistic uh there is that otaku guy uh that, that, that that's kind of sad and i guess he would be <laughs> the main stereotype that i wouldn't want to be related to as i mean He's like, he's, <laughs> he's, he, I mean, he's the more closet type because he like he he plays soccer and he's like athletic too, but he's just really into into dating sims. Yeah, dude. Like when they like when she got when he got called out by the by the the uh the the mini genius or whatever, I was just dying, dude. Like that's so sad. <laughs> and then like the the girls that he's in love with in these dating sims, they actually resemble the uh the senpai. Yeah, like I think her name was Ibar Ibarada. I, Iba Ra something yeah yeah but so it's... which I kind of I think it's a missed opportunity I kind of wish like he would have been like like the jock of the group kind of make it more like mm -hmm. just right. just like like oh just because of your science doesn't mean you can't be athletic you know just just have more mm -hmm. balance because they're all like on like because right now they're mostly on the nerdy side and with the two yes. main characters like being really like you know they don't know anything about relationships. So mm -hmm. so far, yeah. I am enjoying it. I just I was just really worried that it was gonna be like the Sheldon type of thing, but like they, I think they toned it down after the first episode. So like yeah, when, they did. Like when they um, so like when they started doing, because they I think I think their research is something like computer science or whatever or like algorithms. So I was like I actually understood a lot of the jokes they were saying. Like when they kept doing the logic statements and the logic table, I was all laughing hard at mm -hmm. that. And then they yeah. mentioned the traveling salesman problem. Like, oh my! Like, they didn't even say it first, but they said like, oh, we need to figure out how to get do the figure find all the date spots in like the most efficient, you know, manner. I'm like, oh my god, they're gonna they're gonna do traveling salesman, and then bam, next seconds traveling salesman. It's like, so wow. did you do you like how each episode has a uh like what was it like a theory or whatever how to solve it or explaining what each thing's mean? It, it was only it was like kind of building up from the previous episode, so like. It started with the heart rate, and then uh, episode two, they talk about, like, there's no control. And then episode three, like, they went to, like, the date section, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, I mean, just, I think after, like, the first initial, I, think, like, I was just really worried the first episode, but I think after that, like, it started getting better for me. Like, I I, I thought it was just, it got more funny, like, once the other characters were introduced. Oh, yeah, for sure. And then going off of the OP, I'm still trying to wait and see who that last guy is because it looks like every female has a male counterpart. Um, and apparently for Kanade, the assistant, her counterpart is this really buff oh, the scientist buff dude. dude. I have <laughs> that's, yet to see yeah, I have yet to see him, but I'm like, dude, I can't wait to see what it looks like. It's going to be so weird. I don't know. Like, I mean, it's fine now, but I kind of wish there'd be more normal people because, again, like everyone's more on the nerdy side besides Kanade, so... We need more. I mean, it's a rom com. Well, there, there, there shouldn't be any normal people. We need it's more. A no, no, it needs to be balanced out. Like, they need. They need to play the, the straight man to like the the comedic side. So which kind of. No, is, we don't need that anime. Kind of is doing right now, but. Guys. <laughs> yeah. I just think it's kind of weird how she was so in love with her teacher that, that's why she loves math and science so much. But. Bro, you made it tell me that when you were in school, you didn't have a crush on any of your teachers. I mean, uh, it's always weird, like when like like the let's just. When like the female students have a teacher on their male teacher, it's like it's just always more weird like that. Mm, that's some double standards, sir. Sure. That's just favorite. saying. It's just, it's just <laughs> it's always as in as in the famous word of soft parks, like where were all these sexed up teachers when I was in school? <laughs> <laughs> which, which by the way, I need to mention. Um, she was asking her teacher the question about Towers of Hanoi, which is another like programming thing. So yep, that's mm -hmm. why I. I also, also enjoyed the show. There's like so many programming like references in the show, so I'm enjoying it just for that. Yeah, I really enjoy the tidbits. It it adds a little extra oomph to the value of this show. I think, even though like I can do without the the science bear, but like whatever, he's not, he's not annoying. So everyone needs a mascot. And I guess for this, I don't one. know if oh, everyone yeah, needs a mascot. The bear's friend, your favorite, uh, your favorite animal. So. I don't know if everyone needs a mascot. What about a bear? What? Oh, a there's, mascot? There's, there's a science. There's like a science bear in this show that explains like some of the, some of like 
some of the tidbits. Even though it's it's a lot more math right now than science. Like, I mean, they 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 tell how like to set up experiments, but there's it's really more math, like math terms and concepts, because it's because uh, I think I, mean, I think math and science goes hand in hand. Because well, because their their field of research is like programming, so that's why it's a lot more math focused. Right. There's nothing better than a bear for a mascot, guys. <laughs> Whatever. Yep. Sure. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Um. Um, but yeah, I mean that that I think that's really it though. It's just I know. these two trying to solve it's, it, no scientifically reasonable thing possible, I guess. It's it's really enjoyable and it's lighthearted, and yeah, and also it's, it's a web manga, so I'm I don't know like how like like if the whole point of this if or actually because I think it started out as a web manga and they probably like are an official manga now, so I guess they're trying to like sell more of the manga, but like oh okay. But I mean, also like it's. I just wanted to mention too, like, cause I mean, I think the two main characters like they're in grad school, and everyone else is like either you're grad school or like they're seniors and like undergrad. So, so it's not high school, but they're still in university. So it technically, still has that school setting, even though it's not strictly school. So I guess it's, it's a professional setting, sir. A professional I guess, setting. I mean, it's only hard. it's only those six in that research lab. But I mean, I I I'm enjoying having because I, I noticed with web mangas like they usually have more adult characters. Because mm, like you okay. saw like MMO junkie like uh, the main character she was you know a working professional and then even real life like the the characters like they started off as like twenty seven twenty eight year olds and they turned back to high school so I'm just oh, true yeah. so I'm always up for like you know rom coms with like or or just like more shows with more adults because we have enough like shows with teenagers in them so. True and I gotta uh, give a shout out to Himura uh, she. She's uh, one of my new waifus for 2020. I think character design is great. Personality is great. And the thing she does with her hair when she's like oh, happy. The, the, the happy the little, like, like, dog like whale thing. With like the dog point, tail wagging? But it's like yeah. a, a ponytail. Yeah. I like her character yeah. design too. And like, and her and her personality, it's like she's the type. She's like she's the analytical and logical type, but that's like not super annoying. Like yeah, she's not overwhelming in, in any sense. Where I, th- honestly. I, I think the kind of like the guy kind of he sometimes kind of feels that way, but he's not too annoying. He's not annoying, like it's, it's so many mm-hmm. times like you, they could be like just the really annoying like like super logical type, but they make it like fun in the show. So like yeah, I really yeah, I really like, like the personality. Yeah, yeah. So far, there's really no one in this uh, series that I hate, um, but yeah, I think they're doing a great job so far. Oh yeah, so how they, so yeah, I I definitely recommend the show. So it's fun to watch. So that's gonna be it for um, science. Uh, fell in love, and then we're gonna move on to Fate Grand Order. And so Stranding can finally talk. It's not just singing. Hey, buddy. Singing yeah, that's okay. So. Just having to us ramble on random Kuma, shows. Kuma, Kuma, Kuma. <laughs> oh God. So again, this is one of those um, one mm. of those. Sh- shows that are airing from fall season so continuing off we're still in the the underworld um still have to fight against um what was the guy's name er- oh god er- eric eric she- or something Gal- something eric she i think yeah. yeah basically like the other half of ishtar um yep. i just want to mention that like uh mash finally used her goddamn noble phantasm that i've been waiting all season for I didn't realize. Wait, did so does does um Fujimaru, Does he have to use like the command spell for it to go off? Or I I don't know why he has. To, I mean, you wouldn't think so because it's just like because no no other servants was they can yeah. they don't have to do that. Like because mm-hmm. I mean the virtual fate stay, like whenever sh- sh- like Shiro like basically uses command just whenever the servant didn't do what they want or, or yeah, well, masters they... day when they didn't do what they want. Well, they did it before to like power up their noble phantasm, so I don't know if that was like what he was doing here. Um, because I know like from previous ones, like they've used they've used the command, a command seal to power up noble phantasms, but I mean, <clears throat> but not to use it, not just to straight up use the noble phantasm. Okay. I don't just, remember. Like, I don't remember that part. I just remember like um, <clears throat> just, I remember like I was unlimited blades work because some some of them like use their their command spells to make their servants do something, but yeah, I, I, I just can't believe it took like a command spell to finally see the noble phantasm and it didn't even last that long it was just like like barely like five seconds nope. of her just putting the the wall off off camelot which again like 
because they decided to do Babylon first and then Camelot's movie afterwards. So I guess kind of spoiler for Camelot, but whatever. Sure. Whatever. Like for us, I guess Baker, it's it's a mobile game. There's no spoilers. I guess like Camel in the Camelot movies, we're just gonna see Mash like get upgraded, like get the fortress, whatever. Sure. And again, like this, <laughs> like this whole setup, it was like such a mobile game setup where. Oh, no. we we have three people in our. I guess three. There are three people in our party. We just found a boss. Let's go fight it. Yep. Just basically this whole episode. That is fate. Grand order. Just, yep. But yeah, I don't know. It's uh, I really don't have much to say about it. Uh, I mean, really, what happened in this episode? They they ended up finding they they fought uh, um, Ishtar's other half, um, Beater. Yeah. And now she joined, or she didn't really join them yet, but she's going to show up and join them later, it sounds like. I, um, I really her... didn't, like, understand the whole, like, thing they had with her, like, saying how she just want to be recognized, but well, you, sh- you should be yeah, praised for your, like, like saying, like, you yeah. shouldn't, like, just say, just give her praise for doing her job. You should be, she should be praised for, like, doing, like, achieving, having, a with it. having achievements yeah. and, and, like, and... Like the pain of not being recognized to be only held in your heart or something. I don't know. It's really weird. Like, well, I mean, it also sounded like it's. I mean, it was just something that she really didn't want to do. It sounded like she hated Ishtar for being. They're basically able to... saying like, don't complain. Like, just do your job well, and then not, and take pride in that. Because I'm not. I'm not gonna reach out for yeah. you. Like, to help, to give you to, for when you're asked for help, whatever, or for recognition yeah. or something. It, it was really weird. After they beat her, though, um, they severed the ties to the underworld, so she's actually able to freely go wherever the hell she feels like. Okay. They severed um, the ties to the alliance, which I just didn't understand. Like, why she her had to be severed? Because um, I don't think we the, know yet. The other goddess, um, the the Famous Eight Summon Aztec God, whatever. Like, I think she's still part of the alliance, and I don't know if she has to sever that or something. Um, they didn't well, do, I think they the didn't do anything with... with her, so. Well, I think the thing with Ishtar and uh, the other girl that's in the the underworld, it sounded like they were placed there by gods. So like, that's basically what they, they were like, uh, like they were. That's where they're. That, that that's what they were supposed to do, or like that's what like their their job was that the gods gave them. Um, something like that. But then whatever, whoever that guy is, like what like whatever the sword is that like severed the ties for her. Like we still don't know why he did it, um, or like what's He's, like the what's the point? I barely remember who he like. I remember we met him earlier. Is he supposed to be like? They didn't explain him though. Like we met him earlier, but they didn't explain what. He, I assume like, like he's he like another. He's like a god of the underworld or something. Which it, I it which, is, okay. Which I thought I thought that what that's what um Irish the other goddess was that she was supposed to be the guardian. That she was just like the, just like the grave keeper or like the soul collector or something. Yeah, he reminds me of the the priest guy that's from uh Fate the uh Fate's Day where he it's even the same exact voice actor. Oh, um, um Kyrie. Yeah. Well, was no was Kyrie the the name of uh uh the priest? Yeah, the, the basic, Oh, that's his name. Okay, yeah. I couldn't remember. Um, but uh, yeah, it's um. So so I just assume he it's like another one of those things where he has kind of like a separate plan or how things are supposed to go, um, that they haven't explained. Uh, that will I would I'm guessing we'll find out later. It's he's just kind of like he seems like right now kind of a third party, um. Where we don't know really what, like why he's doing it, but blah, 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 you know this this the same usual stuff. The only um, yeah, the only thing that happened was like we Gilgamesh finds out that um, Enkidu's corpse wasn't in the underworld, so like, but they were just basically saying like oh somebody took it. So I mean I think they're just saying like just like someone else took over his body, but his soul is still not there. So yeah. I don't think it really matters. Like cause it's, yep. we saw his body, and like you, you could assume that it was being taken over. So. Yeah, it was, I yeah. Didn't really see the point in that. He wanted to confirm, I guess. I don't know. Well, Gilgamesh ended up going to the. He was in the underworld, and then now he's back to the normal world, I guess. And uh, we'll find out, I guess, where they go from here. Yeah, basically. No. I, I got nothing. Uh, everything else is just <laughs> basically everything else is just more to fight Gorgon and uh, King yeah. Kingu. So. Yeah, I just want to see like. I don't know, man. Oh, this and story we, is... and we barely saw Gilgamesh fight in this episode, which is kind of disappointing, yeah. but whatever. Well, the thing is, he couldn't. It sounded like that he couldn't actually like, like physically like attack her, but he could attack the weapon. Oh, okay. Um, that's what it made it sound like. Um, I don't know if it's because like he's in the underworld or like if he's already dead, he can't. He w- he wasn't able to actually inflict any damage to her. 
Um, but they made it sound like for some reason they were able to attack her weapon. I don't know why. Okay. Um, we should, we should just play the game instead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's basically that's basically what they have it at as. So. All right. I guess we're gonna hand there for fake grand order then. Yeah, I just want to see fights. Yeah, same. <laughs> this, this story is just so confusing. I'm just I'm here for the fights now. It sounds so bad, but oh, whatever. Yeah, I'm just gonna leave it at that. Um. <laughs> so. And then I'm going to move over to Madoka um, Magica Record. This is, I think I'm the only one who watched it, so I guess I'll just be kind of giving a short, just a short section for it. This is uh, the side story to the the, the Madoka series. That, it's actually based off a mobile game. So, um, but like this, this show basically assumes you've seen Madoka, so it's not a good place to jump in right away. You basically have to watch Madoka to understand what's happening because like, because like a lot of the, a lot of the premise, yeah, they just they don't explain that to the first episodes, and there actually it was two episodes, or whatever. So because the first episode aired last week, but I didn't talk about it, so I'm just gonna talk about both today. But I overall, I, I still actually I do enjoy it. Um, I think it's a good, like, it's good, it's a good part of like the, the franchise or the series. So like if you're a, if you're a fan of the original Madoka, I definitely recommend watching it. It's um the new the the main character this time. It's different than the way we had before with, with like Madoka and and Homura. So the basic premise is, is like um is uh that the main character like she well first she 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 didn't know what she wished what she wished for before she became a magical girl, and then like the cliffhanger at the first episode is basically like. Like he find out that, um, like she wished for her to get rid of her her sister's illness, but then her sister like doesn't exist in this world. So now the mystery is like what happened to her sister, and so there's still like um there's still a lot of fighting. It's still like that weird like the whole like Madoka um style of like the witches and like the, the weird background and animation. So I guess it's it's part of like the series. I was that was. I mean, it's weird. It's not meant to be weird on purpose, but it's just really weird. So they still have that going. It's just just bas- basically like what you're familiar with in Monoka. Um, then there wasn't really that much fighting, like first or second um, episode. Like just some, just like battles here and there, but nothing too crazy. Is more focused on the story. They int- they did introduce like more. There's like yeah the main. The first episode, they had like a, another girl, like Kurore, but like she, she, she didn't wasn't really there much of the second episode. I don't think she, I don't know, if she's still gonna be part of the main series. It seems like the main, like the main series is gonna be, it's gonna be like, uh, like because the main girl is Iroha. It's probably gonna, it's gonna be her and the three girls she met in the second episode. So I expect like it's those four as the main say for the rest of the series and. Um, episode two, like, kind of, it goes off like there's like kind of a fight between like two of the girls, and that the cliffhanger is uh, basically like, I mean, the, the cliffhanger is basically like between the, the those two. So we'll see what happens um, next episode. So, I mean, overall, I'll say like it's it's pretty good if you're a fan of the series, but definitely if you haven't watched uh, the original Monica, you you pay you have to watch that first because this doesn't explain anything that happens in the series or any of the premise so definitely watch that first but yeah if you're a fan of manga i would highly recommend um magica record like this this new side story so i'm excited to see what happens next so the, whatever shren <laughs> <laughs> and then that's gonna be it that's so that's gonna be it for manga um actually i'm gonna mention um next, so we're going to the next show i forgot to put this down but I, just, I need to mention about inspector um so, uh, if anyone's familiar with um, uh, Zetsuwe no Tempest or Blast of Tempest, this is by the same author. So that's that's what originally caught my attention, and I actually read a little bit of the manga like a while back, but it wasn't really that far. So, and I, and this first episode, like yeah, it, um, basically it introduces it. Um, the main character is like this seventeen year old like sh- like girl, like this very short girl. Um, you find out that. She was like kid, uh, kidnapped by like 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 yokai or like other like spirits like when she was eleven, and they asked her to be like like the goddess of wisdom, 
So in exchange for that, they 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 like took out like her her like her leg, one of her legs, and like her the other side of her eye. And so now like you see her just walk around with a cane because she has this prosthetic leg, and then she has like like a fake eye, but she can see like 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 yokai, and other spirits. And then like, uh, they mentioned uh the other main character, the male lead, like that she had a crush on, and they're just explaining how, um he like just broke up with his girlfriend and now she's trying to ask him out but eventually like they um it does lead to like more like they more yokai encounter where she basically um can talk to yokai and you find out like like later at the library uh there's like this huge like yokai that broke a barrier and um she's just there to investigate and uh and basically but you find out later like the, the main guy like it it sounds like he he was freaked out about seeing like a because like, he saw like a kappa randomly, but like, but then it's, they reveal that it's that there's more to him than meets the eye. So he, like, he knows more than he's laying on. And then like basically a twist at the end, like just reveals like yeah he definitely like has he definitely he's definitely involved like in yokai, and so, so basically the rest of the series is just them, um just trying to exp- I mean she's the main character so it's her talking to the other yokai and then like you try and figure out what's the deal with like this guy and like. Uh, basically explain how did he like get involved with yokai too so but i enjoyed uh, the first episode i thought it was a uh, definitely uh, interesting setup so i'm looking forward to uh the rest of the series and i'm basically i'm just going off just by how like it's by the same author as like blast of tempest so i, I really enjoyed that series so i'm looking forward to this this new work by the author so that's gonna be it for um inspector and then um uh, next series we're gonna move on to is pet uh so i just so this show is basically like kind of psychological it's the premise is that um there's there's people who can kind of like manipulate your mind and they can like make either make you hallucinate or they can like they can persuade you to do things that you normally wouldn't and so it's kind of confusing like the whole direction was confusing and i kind of like thought the first episode was kind of boring like it was i don't know i thought it was kind of slow that like it didn't really there was a lot of like things they were setting up for the episode but i didn't i don't think it really got to the point and and like there's certain parts where like I, like yeah like uh, one of the guys he starts to hallucinate because that's like the power of like that's like their power is like basically um like they can make him hallucinate and make him and they basically um make him like think that like nothing wrong ever happened so i mean that part i guess wasn't too confusing but it's just like the whole direction of this of just all of the hallucinations and just like mind control like i don't know it's just it didn't feel like it. It didn't feel like a good like episode to me. Like it just because I still don't really. I besides like we find out we find out that like yeah, it's an organization that can can do it control this, but we don't we don't really know like who's who's the main character who's like. I mean, I guess like we know who the villains are, but like we don't know like what's really gonna happen. Like, what's the whole point of like the mind control besides just like just doing it because you can or having control over people? So it was like. It didn't really draw me into the world as much, so I'm curious. I guess I'll see how it goes, but for me, it felt like the first episode was very uninspiring. I just wasn't feeling much of it, so that's all I'm gonna say. I mean, for, for do you think it's gonna? Are you gonna keep watching it though? Like, I'll do you watch think it's the enough next or? episode, but I can see like my, I can see myself dropping the show just because like it just didn't feel interesting based on the first episode so i hope uh i hope next week taylor can get on and defend her <laughs> this show because i think she had high uh high ratings for it i guess right, so so far um i'm not sure how much she um said it was good she just said like i wouldn't like it <laughs> so <laughs> so i don't know you degenerates wouldn't like it okay i guess well yeah my uh, my eyes can't handle it. <laughs> any any of my comedies and in, in trash arms. Oh my god. Okay, so that's all I'm gonna yes. say for pet. So, 
that's um that's pretty much for we're gonna end it there because that's that's basically so far what we got for this winner honestly it's not really that much standout shows like really the big ones is still my hero academia and the big the new one really is high q so um we're got so for um the youtube channel we're definitely gonna clip out the episodes for my hero academia and high q so you just want to watch that individually you can and then that way um, you just have to like go through just try to find like the timestamps or anything so we'll clip that for those two in general um really the one only one the ones i'm looking forward to the most are just like is that inspector and like the science fell in love show um ku is there like anything really that stood out for you so far for this first week Oh, and, and ID Invader. I don't know if I said that. So those those three, yeah. Yeah, so for me, honestly, uh, the, the new stuff that it's that I have high hopes for would be uh, High Q, uh, It Invaded, Science Fell in Love. And uh, David might not like it, but oh I look God. forward to uh, watching Bofuri. So let, 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 let's see how that pans Whatever. out. Whatever, yeah. So yeah, usually winter is just a very weak season. It's like always like the weakest season of for like anime, so it's to be expected. Um, yeah, this season is kind of trash. Like in all honesty, so, the lineup's pretty bad. This season's gonna have to be carried by Hero and uh, and Haiku. And Hero's starting to fail already. So well, um, this, this arc is basically <clears> yeah, so. yeah. So yeah, we'll I would see. say like Hero <laughs> game is like basically basically after next week it's gonna start a new arc. So we'll see, but. Um, yeah. Also, I should mention too that uh, that um, I didn't watch the um, Izokin show, the Keep Your Hands Off Izokin yet. So I'll I'll watch uh, I'll I'll watch that for next week's podcast and just my, give my thoughts. I did wa- actually I forgot to mention too, I did watch the first episode of Somali and the, and the Four Spirit. I forgot about that, but like the thing is like that show um like it's very pretty. Like the backgrounds are very pretty. It like it looks i was it looks like like those like picture books or like 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 those crayon drawings in picture books it's pre- very pretty and there's a lot of like fantasy elements going on because because um, like what is it like made in abyss um it's is more it, like, uh, like i feel like it's more crude it's not as uh oh you see a tuco i saw the first episode yeah i think there's only one episode there's only one there? episode yeah. yeah is there oh okay yeah, yeah. so uh, yeah, I don't. I find the drawings to be kind of crude. I didn't really enjoy I thought, I thought the art. I thought it was pretty, so like I really enjoyed the art. But um, but the thing is, like, and then like, a lot of fantasy too, because like, because the, the the little girl, she's the only human, and they're, they're trying to find other humans. But a lot of the focus is like is the relationship between like the the little girl and like the the golem, or just like the the the, the guardian. And I was I was. Just, getting bored like i was spending more time looking at the background than like actually like following the story or anything it's i guess it's like more slice of life i guess or it's just like it's just exploring it's just exploring the world with like the the little girl and like this guardian but i just i don't know if i can really like keep up with it i just i didn't really find it interesting like story-wise or even like character drama wise just because it's like the little girl and like and like the golem like doesn't really say much either so i don't think i'm gonna keep watching it so yeah and then to kind of backtrack to uh hands off the motion pictures club um i want to say if if you like studio ghibli movies uh you might enjoy this but also again with this one the animation i didn't really enjoy it as much it's kind of uh Offsetting to the eyes, so this is uh, um this is so Aizoken is um it's I think it's based off like a manga, but like the the director, it's the same guy who did um Tatami Galaxy, uh Ping Pong the animation and Devil Man Crybaby, so that's why people are hyped for the show just because he's directing it. But I think it's more for like the animation style. I think the original is still like a manga, mm-hmm. so I don't know like about the story if it's gonna do well. I, I don't know, so I'll check it out and i guess give my thoughts for next week's episode yeah i'd, I'd, I'd be interested to see what you think about it so even though, but even though i wish i i saw his earlier series so i, could, I can compare but because mm-hmm. i'm interested in tatami galaxy so i mean i'll watch that later but we'll see so yeah so i think i think that's all the shows for this first week preview we're probably gonna cut it down like soon we're not gonna like um we're not gonna um probably watch all these shows 
and so so that's just yeah that's just gonna be it uh i'm just gonna mention too so uh that was uh we have uh we have our all the social media accounts up and ready so if you want to follow us on like twitter or like, instagram uh if you want to watch us live we stream it on twitch mainly just so we can record and like stand off between me and Stren. so we're live on twitch <laughs> at izakaya studios or izakaya underscore studios and then um we have both like the video and audio version we'll have them available um when they're both done and so yeah if you so there's so we, we do talk about a lot of shows so if there's only a couple you're interested in just just Look for timestamps in the description or the show notes in the auto version, and just jump there. But I was just gonna make a, a quick mention too with our usually like our first uh, or at least what happened last season is like our first and second episode are usually our, our longest ones just because it's like we're just introducing we're we're trying out a bunch of different shows. Um, we're just kind of giving like the rundown of it, and then uh, and then that's usually and then usually the weeks after that is when <laughs> we start dropping shows. And uh, the show starts getting a little shorter. <laughs> yeah, I usually give each series like four episodes before I decide if I want to drop yeah. it or not. Or, or so. even like, well, we might just like just give like shorter like airtime for some of the shows just because like we don't have have much to say on it. So yeah, this is just yes. this is just like basically like preview of like winter like of what uh, has actually aired. Yeah. So. And trying not to spoil those shows too much. I'm oh, no, I'm, I'm but... spoiling it after this after this episode. I'm I'm spoiling it. So just so. one episode was the was the freebie. Okay. This is a freebie for you. This is your freebie. Yeah. yeah. So well, I guess we I think we kind of spoiled it somewhat this episode, but whatever. We we yeah. we try to keep yeah. it, but just uh, light for the first week. But going from now on, yeah, we're gonna be talking about what happened in the episode that just aired. So expect spoilers. Yes. So that's why again use timestamps, just to jump around if you need to. So. All right, but I think that's gonna be it for this week's episode. I want to thank everyone for listening. Who <laughs> make make it this far? Because it's usually a two-hour show. Uh, Thanks, Brian. <laughs> I love all of you. I want to thank my panel for <laughs> joining me today. Um, yeah, and mm-hmm. we'll see you guys next week on the next episode. So we'll see you later. Bye. Bye. Thanks. See ya.